Hola everyone. Kega Gari 2.0 is back. This story is all about what if Luffy never ate the devil fruit. What will be the flow of the story? Let's find out. The summary. Luffy started his journey on the East Blue but a twist of fate makes so he can't eat a devil fruit. How does this change shape the world? Join him on a new journey. I've had it with you guys. Now you'll have to take me seriously, said a short boy with a t-shirt with an anchor drawing and name written on it. His name is Monkey D. Luffy and with a knife in hand he continues. This is how tough I am. Ha ha ha. Get it over with. Whatever it is, said a man with a straw hat on the boat where the boy is about to pull his stunt. He has red hair and three scars over his left eye. His name is Shanks and he is amused for now. Around him the crew on the boat watch. Excited to see what the boy is about to do to prove that he can go with them on their adventures for you see they are pirates. The kind of pirates that like to party, explore and, some would say, mostly of they are harmless. The mood around is joyful when suddenly the Luffy stabs himself below the eye making all around him flinch for the size of his stupidity. A toast to Luffy's, courage, and to our great voyage. A bit later you can see the pirates in a tavern located in this humble village called Fusha and it's a party, give back my meat, that pirates can truly enjoy with lots of rum and fights. It didn't hurt a bit, says the boy, but to any paying attention the tears are fighting to leave his eyes. The wound is covered with a band-aid and his smile is still happy even if he sweats by the pain. Liar that was a foolish thing to do, Shanks is not amused anymore as before. Some would say that he's the influence that made the boy pull that stunt. The bad kind. I'm not afraid to get hurt. Take me with you on your next voyage. The boy's happiness is contagious and lots of people around him start to party more except the redhead who just watches unimpressed, I wanna be a pirate too. You? A pirate? Impossible. Do you know why we call you anchor? Because you would just sink. What good is a pirate that can't swim? Raised a good point with a smile the captain of the red-haired pirates, a crew of fame in the right places. But if I don't fall overboard, then it doesn't matter if I'm an anchor. The redhead looks serious at that point, and I'm a strong fighter. I've been training. My punch is as powerful as a pistol. A pistol, eh? Is that so? He really neither believes nor cares about that comment. Are you doubting me? The pirates continue to sing and laugh about the banter of their captain and the boy, sometimes throwing fuel on the fire and giving him some ideas of how is the life of a pirate and trying to convince their leader to take Luffy for at least one voyage, that is until. If he goes one of you is staying, and while many things can be said about pirates, selfishness is right there on top for with no hesitation they desert the boy and go back to their party. The antics keep going with highlights such as Shanks giving Luffy milk and saying he can't be a pirate for they don't drink milk. The first mate trying to explain the responsibilities of a captain to the kid and the tavern owner Makino offering Luffy some food of which he will pay later with his treasure. To be found, she founds all funny and puts a little extra meat for the boy. Shanks. Yeah kid. How much longer will you stay at this village? While trying to pull a piece of his meat with just his teeth. Let's see. Hums the pirate. We've been using this village as our base for about a year. After two or three more voyages we'll leave here for good and head north. I see. Two or three more trips eh? Luffy says and while no one else sees it but Makino notices that the boy, while has his mouth full, was pensive about the departure of his friends. Now fate is a funny thing and really is hard to see. What could have been, if some people act differently for whatever reason? In another life the boy would keep eating until he devoured a certain fruit for dessert and his life would be forever changed for that decision alone. This doesn't happen on this one. Some of the beats are the same, mountain bandits come to the bar. They are rude, they waste a bottle of rum and then they leave calling the pirates cowards and that is it. Dot dot dot. HMPH. To go find a real role model. Luffy is about to storm off, frustrated for the lack of a will to fight from the pirates. Shanks calmly holds his army, Luffy, I know you don't understand right now but a reason to fight is as important as the fight itself. Tried to explain the pirate with a smile on his face. Now calm down, sit for a bit and, what's that on your hand? On the boy's hand is a fruit the size of an apple but purple with a weird pattern on it and looking at it all pirates start to panic because that is not a normal fruit, not only for its appearance but also for the curse it cares. Captain on his hand is that, that, spoke in fear a pirate with a really long nose. Shanks suddenly grabs Luffy by his shoulders, Luffy please tell me that you didn't ate a single piece of this fruit. This is really important, he was trembling in worry for the boy. What? No, why? Is it poisoned or anything? The boy was curious and confused. He was about to eat it but didn't have time for that. 
asked, sighing in relief the redhead relaxed, took the fruit from Luffy and started explaining, Luffy this is a rare fruit from the sea and it was a curse on it. Its name is gum gum fruit or gomu gomu no mi, there are a lot of those from the oceans that we came from and for, whatever reason, this one was hidden in one of the islands that we visited the other week. Getting a chest from one of his companions the captain puts the fruit in it and closes it, keeping the chest on his lap while he explains, there is a legend that this fruit was made by the devil himself. The devil? He is real? Asked the kid more curiously than he should, can I meet him? Laughter goes on all the tavern with that comment alone and the captain continues his tale. I never meet the guy but here is how they work, you eat one fruit, you gain the power of that fruit in return for never being able to swim again, thinking a bit he continued. Some say that those who eat one of there are cursed by the sea and hated by the gods of it. There are many tales of why and its origins and no one knows for sure why this happens only that if you ate this one for example you would become a rubber man and just by having your knees in the water on the ocean would make you weak. Why would anyone want one of these fruits then? Why do you have it? Asked the kid, still a bit mad but more curious than anything. Yes, there are downsides, but some of these have huge powers. Tried to explain Shanks. Like, let's see, oh what about one that makes earthquakes, said the captain. Oh, I know one, using light to shoot lasers. What about turning into sand and using it on attacks? Wanna know one that I wouldn't want to have. The human human fruit, would have to be really unlucky to eat that one. More and more pirates start to cheap in on devil fruits and their powers, from the simple ones like controlling your shadow to the ridiculous like turning into some kind of burning bird, Luffy wonders if it's for eating. Fine you don't fight, you don't take me seriously I'm done, then the kid storms off, not believing in the pirates and their strange stories. Luffy. Let him go Makino, Shanks continues to clean the damage made by the bandits with a smile, let him be a kid for a while longer, only adults should worry for complicated stuff, his crew moves to help him clean the mess and to prepare for tomorrow's voyage. Comma dot. The pirates were out of the village when the bandits decide to come back and insult them. Luffy missing his friends insults Higuma, 8 million dead or alive the leader of the mountain bandits not understanding yet that every action has consequences. Comma. Kid you are really an idiot aren't cha. Higuma watches as his men keep beating Luffy without restraint. Kicks, punches, anything, boys no rush, have some fun until this brat learns some manners. One of the bandits stomps his chest with enough strength to make the boy scream in pain while his tormentors laugh. The villagers, common people, Hide in their houses afraid, some want to help the boy but there are at least 30 criminals attacking and all of them are fighters, there is nothing they can do. Pain runs through his body but his eyes keep looking to the leader of the bandits defiant, ta, back. Hum, is the brat saying something? Higuma asks, stopping his man laughter, or ya apologizing. If so I can be merciful if you beg, taunts the bandit. All is quiet and then, I said take back what you said. Even hurt and bleeding from the beating the boy's declaration is strong and determined, he will not allow the insults to his friends go unanswered even if afraid, Shanks is a better man than you he isn't a coward or weak. Take that back. Luffy stops to take air after screaming with all his strength then all the bandits start to laugh harder than before, you are an idiot, says Higuma in between his own laughter, and looks like need to learn your lesson. Come and get me, even on his back Luffy still goes and insults the man. Fine I will apologize, faking a look of regret the bandit draws his sword, in a letter written from your blood so don't move now. Now I would recommend you to stop before you make me even more mad, said a voice, it was a strong one and not coming from any of the bandits. All turned to look at the side to see the pirates coming as a group, all armed and looking ready to fight, ah, here you are. Give me a minute will you? I promised this kid to write a letter with his blood and I kinda need a bit more, Taunts Higuma with his men also getting ready but more confident in their numbers, it was a 30 versus 16 situation after all. With his eyes covered by his hat Shanks starts to talk every word a little bit louder than the last, you can insult me, call me coward, spit on me I will laugh off all that. But you never and I mean never should have h-u-r-t-e-d my friend, there was something on his voice, on his posture, relaxed and with a hand ready to draw his own sword, that looked terrifying to the bandits and they hesitated. But it's too late now for no mercy was granted or quarter given for. Red hair, Shanks, 4,048,900,000 dead or alive has no need for his crew to fight. He is angry and all happens in a flash that Luffy and the villagers barely could see or understand.
How could they, since these pirates have never acted with cruelty or malice before? See. It happens on seconds. The pirate draws his sword and cuts two bandits mid-draw with a third that was behind also being taken down with no mercy. Advancing without losing stride he stabs the next two in rapid succession to get to Luffy, picking him up and then retreating bringing down the one that had his foot on him with a kick using just a hand for his saber while the other holds the boy close to his chest. By the time he retreated Higuma started to sweat cold not understanding how all this happened. And how could he? In a world where the ocean covers so much that the bigger nations are still just islands, how can all information that happens in a corner of this world reach his small mountain? For the first time in his life he realizes he was a small fish on a smaller pond. Luffy, you all right? Asked Shanks, keeping a semblance of calm for the boy's sake. You were really brave there so don't worry we'll take this. Are, we, really, friends? Asks the boy interrupting the captain. Shanks smiles, of course you goof, worried as he was and as hurt as Luffy looked everything was going to be fine. Shanks knew that this kid is strong. Captain, we will take care of Luffy, orders for these guys. Asked the pirate with a rifle and a hard expression on his face. He was the first mate and he was also pissed. I don't want anyone killed, and for a second the bandit sighed in relief. However they beaten our small anchor a lot and for that we will give them a beating that even their ghosts will feel forever. And that they did, the end result was 30 bandits tied up, beaten close to death to be delivered to the marine that eventually would pass by this village and when he does there is gonna be hell to pay. Comma. Are you leaving today? Asks Luffy who was covered by a huge number of bandages on his body, but even then he is still standing with no problems. Shanks had to admit the kid was tough to have gotten up after just a week of rest. But to be fair all the crew and a lot of villagers were there babying him until he could move alone, including Shanks himself who stayed with him the most. We are already delayed and your grandfather will be here soon and he is a scary man, said Shivering. Also shivering a bit Luffy could only nod. I'm going to miss you all. Looking to the boat where supplies for the trip were being transported. Not gonna ask to go again little anchor. The smile on Shanks face almost looked like he wanted to pick a fight. No I won't, you will see I'll have my own crew better than yours become a pirate better than you I will be the pirate king, at the end Luffy couldn't help but scream and all pirates around him gave small smiles for the declaration. Better than us, huh? Shanks then put his hat on Luffy's head. You do that and when you can give this hat back to me okay. Luffy put both his hands on the straw hat and holded it on a way to cover his eyes, nodding without hesitation. While the redhead walked to his ship Luffy couldn't help but ask, Shanks, all you told me was true right? I can be even stronger than that loser if I use my will right. The kid spent one week hearing Shanks tell him crazy stories and after seeing how much the captain cared for him he knew Shanks wouldn't lie but he felt the need to ask. Every single word. Answered with no hesitation. Train your body Luffy but more than anything else train you will. Your ambition and you will be truly strong. Ah before I forget. Are you sure you don't want the gum gum fruit? After all that happened Shanks offered the fruit again for its power could protect the boy and make him stronger. Luffy smiled, that was the fourth time he asked and the answer will always be the same, if I will have a devil fruit one day will be after I get it myself, because as a pirate's I will earn it, there was no doubt in his eyes and no fear either. See you on the ocean Luffy, one day their paths will cross again, thought Shanks on a smile on the his face, I will bet on you, don't disappoint me and even if you do give up try to just be yourself. I never quit you will see, then I will beat you up for leaving Makino like this, hearing that one Shanks almost fell in everyone on the port, even his crew laughed like no tomorrow. Makino's smile seemed to shine on that moment. When I see you again I will beat you for that. Come get me old man. All the way until they couldn't hear each other anymore they screamed more and more promises to see each other again. Comma. Garp is a strong man, a legend of the marines, the hero, a vice admiral, if only because he always refused to be promoted. After a certain, red hair, passed and became a bad influence on his grandson Garp tried to work in fixing his behavior to make him a good marine, after promptly arresting the mountain bandits that hurt his grandson making sure that their condition didn't get, worse, while they were escorted to a hell-like prison. After proving that he could make grown men cry he picked his grandson and took him to be raised by an old friend of his called Curly Dandan, a mountain bandit much for Luffy's joy. Everything was going fine, the brat learned to get along with the other brat and they found a third one in the forest because why not? So Garp, 
being the exemplary grandfather he was, decided to train the three of them to be marines, not pirates or else you get the fist of love. Then it all went downhill where Sabo died and because the nobles and after all the crying from his grandsons he was once again glad for not getting promoted to admiral and having to take care of those people. Now here he is with his remaining family, the less said about his son the better for lots of reasons, and one of the brats refuses to fall asleep. Ever since his time with the redhead pirate there is a thing Luffy does every single day that was to try and figure out how to use his ambition to get stronger for apparently that pirate couldn't keep his mouth shut about some dangerous stuff that he would teach if the they became marines where he could protect them. Good thing, red hair didn't have time to give an appropriate lesson but seeing Luffy punching trees like an idiot every day stopped being funny on his 10th birthday, Luffy what are you doing? He knew but he needed to see what Luffy thought. Trying to break a tree with a punch with my will, well at least he wasn't trying to do it with his mind alone and that will harden his bones because he is being careful maybe after having broken his hand at some point. Ironically that is what is holding him back. Well, Time to give him a bone, Luffy while I don't like all that pirate told you and hate that I could get here faster to teach him some stuff myself, the memory of his time with Higuma makes him wish to teach Shanks just a little more Kindle but still, you are doing it wrong. That is not how you train your ambition. Luffy stops and turns to look at his gramps, Dayton house is all dark and they were the only ones awake at that hour, and the boy is already used to sleeping late and waking early to train with Ace, and how would you know that? Garp hits Luffy so fly, for him, on the head, are you really going to listen to a pirate more than your gramps? Yes, he was hit again. You fool I will let you know I am a legend on the marines and if you join I will teach you how to use hockey, Brag Garp in a tone that made it sound like he knew what he was talking about. Hockey. Gramps, I want ambition. It's the same thing. How? It's different. Officially there are tons of islands with different quirks for our language and technically the name hockey has more meaning in. I lost you there didn't I? Finally Garp notices that Luffy is back at punching the same tree. Okay fair enough, a demonstration then, step aside brat. The hero steps forward in front of his grandson and the boy can only watch as Garp pulls back to punch and then he stops suddenly, gramps what happened. Is something wrong? Yes Luffy it is, looked around with a serious face. We should do this far away from here because if we don't we will wake everyone. Quote dot dot dot. K. Comma. Ten minutes later Garp stands in front of another tree almost the same as the one close to the house of the Dayton family, first a normal punch, then he does it on the center of the tree and it falls broken in half, the place where the fist hit clear to see. Whoa. Is that ambition or, Hattie? He gets hit again. Idiot it's, hockey, Braddon also know I said this was a normal punch, the result of years of training discipline and something that anyone can do with time and, while the same could be said about hockey, Anyone can learn with time and patience, he stops to see if his grandson is still paying attention, surprisingly he was looking more interested than ever, hockey is harder to learn and even harder to master boo it I'm not teaching you anything else about that. Why? Frustration was visible on the kid's face, he was liking that lesson, come on gramps tell me more, gets hit again. Silence, only advanced navy personnel can use and be taught this techniques, now Garp smiles a with a sly look. Of course I can teach you once you join the marines. Don't wanna. Gonna be a pirate. Dodges the hit. Ha. Huh, not the second one. Cheeky brat. Anyway I promise to hockey punch so pay attention for. Until you enlist this will be the only time you will see it. Luffy is paying the most attention than he ever did on anything on his life for Garp is no liar so there will be only one punch. After some preparation the hero of the marines finally punches screaming. Fist of love. While the name confused Luffy the damage was what impressed. The tree he punched was completely destroyed and not only it but also the ones behind it, even the ground moved with the impact of the attack, but Luffy saw nothing different even if there was something he couldn't see, even if it was there then how he did it. The boy wasn't the best at thinking and he knows it but when he wants something nothing can stop a strong enough will. Please Gramps do it again. I said once Brad and I did it. Garp prepares to go back to bed. Soon he would leave again and that may have been the only time he could show the boy the power of hockey. Maybe now he would join the navy to grow stronger. Then he was gone and Luffy was alone looking at the damage done by Garp and remembering every detail that he could about hockey. The power, its weight and might. Shanks said that you need ambition to become pirate king and Luffy would learn hockey before his trip for he would be king. Dot dot dot. Years were gone in a flash and now he has to watch more of his family go, 
Ace, good luck, leave some adventures to me, okay. His older brother is about to go, to become a pirate on his 17th birthday just like they promised years ago. Huh. Knowing you there will be some mess and you'll get there some way, with freckles on his face and a orange hat port his D. Ace is about to embark on the beginning of his own journey, you better be stronger next time I see you Lou, because for me, is all up from here. Wasn't that a scary thought? Because Luffy never has beaten Ace, ever, something the older sibling still likes to brag about. Luffy insisted on the hockey thing, still working on that while Ace got stronger focusing on what Garb taught about the body to them. Funny how the old man never mentioned hockey again after that night. Hey. Luffy are ya there? You didn't fell asleep on my departure did you? Ace's smile was really teasing because both of them know he is the one who falls asleep on this events. Hey Dayton, keep an eye on my idiot brother here, if you can that is. Huh. You are still here. Get going you brat. I'm happy to be rid of you, the big woman said but her tears implied otherwise, the members of her gang keeping her from storming off after the man, either to beat him up or stop him as anyone's guess. Huff, fancy that. Anyway Luffy I'm going now when we see each other again we will have lived our own adventures so let's sit down and trade stories won't we? The smile on the brothers' faces said it all, yes they would. Makino then comes forward with a basket, here are some treats for the trip, and do keep in mind to be respectful to your elders, the mayor a few feet behind her scoffed at that one. And please don't forget to visit once in a while. We don't need another pirate coming here to bring more shame to the village. The mayor hits his cane on the ground, besides Garp is going to throw a fit once he hears Ace left. Speaking of the devil, I better get going before he shows up. Jumping on the small boat he unties it and kicks the port to push it. Raising his army he screams, I'm gonna miss you guys, Dayton it has been fun living with you and Luffy I see you on the sea. Ace's boat starts to go beyond the horizon and, much like Shanks, he leaves with the sight of his smiling brother and the screams of goodbye from him and the rest of his family. Comma dot. A few days later, is night and Luffy is getting frustrated. He keeps trying to get hockey and imitating his gramps punch, he couldn't forget the move the pressure and at this point he can break a tree with a punch but it barely falls and the damage isn't even close to his gramps punch. Every day for years remembering every bit he could about that night, every detail he could and nothing came from it. He knows he is stronger, even if Ace always won their fights he trained more other stuff while Luffy focused on hockey and now Ace is gone. Suddenly he stops his punches, the tree broken in half but not much more, with his brother gone he had no one to spar with, to train with, sure sooner or later Gramps would show up but he refuses to show or teach more of hockey. Now Ace will go and grow stronger on the sea while he stays here and just waits his turn to go, unless his Gramps decide to teach him more. Sitting on the ground he picks his hat and looks at it, remembering his promises to Shanks, that time he almost died and how pissed he was for his weakness. It was annoying to not be able to do anything, just like now. Maybe he should go to bed for the night and tomorrow try to train in other ways or look to the forest and try to find a fruit to eat. Then he stopped, I will grow strong on my own. I don't need a dumb fruit, remembering Shank's offer and almost wishing to take it was the last straw. He got up, put his hat on his head and stood in front of a rock bigger than a house and just stared at it. Then he closed his eyes, remembering Garp's moves, but this time he changed it, when pulling his arm back he holded the other on the front, palm open almost as if aiming. I'll do what I want, even if it kills me. And what I want to do is grow stronger. Stronger than anyone, I will bet this arm, if it breaks then, I will give up my dream, I will bet all I have on this. Same way when he stared death on the mountain bandit sword, same way when he proclaimed that he would be pirate king, he put every wish, every dream on his arm in that moment. This punch is stronger than any pistol AH. In that moment, before his fist met the rock a door opened. Was it on his mind or his heart, maybe his soul? He didn't know but he felt something shift from the tips of his toes to his arm and he saw as it suddenly looked black. Then it made contact with the stone and it shattered. After coughing a bit of the dust that got blow from the impact Luffy looks at his arm stuck on the rock. It didn't hurt, says the boy before he starts to dance with his arm still stuck on the rock. So happy he was that he couldn't stop himself from laughing. I did it I did it I did it. Then he notices his arm is stuck and pulls it out with some effort. Looking at his fist he tried to make it black again but couldn't for a minute, until he did for a second before it stopped, still not as strong as Gramps, he said with a smile, 
but I can grow more still, and walked up to bed with a smile on his face and ideas how to start training more the next day. Mountain bandits belong to the mountains, but today Curly Dayton is going to an area closer to the sea to collect a certain brat that supposedly she has to take care of. Ever since his brother left one year ago the kid has been running out early and coming back late close to the night and sometimes even when all were already on bed, always with a dumb grin on his face the same excuse every time, training. She huffed. Maybe he is excited by the idea of leaving, she murmurs a bit sad that her last brat will soon leave but also happy that Ace's departure didn't beat his joyful mood. The problem. He is disappearing every day, and while he and Garp had a bit of a fight with shouts about marines and pirates, is usual but no fists for once, a few months back that made Garp leave to his job earlier than he should with a strangely pensive face, he is also making Dayton worry, what is the brat up to now? So today she would find out what Luffy is doing all this time. First step. Talk with Makino, for the boy would go there almost every day, either to eat there or hang out with her for a while. She said that he would be around here, in the middle of the mountains between the center of the kingdom and the Fusha village and even then she kept moving closer to the sea. If he wanted to swim he could have gone to a lake so why did Luffy came here? Suddenly she hears a roar and runs towards it. Worry starts to work on her face the closer she gets to the ocean and then she sees a red button shirt, sandals and a straw hat on the ground and starts to get more worried, looking around frantically trying to find her charge when, suddenly, a brown sea king emerged from the water roaring more and shaking his head almost like trying to shake a bug. She gets ready to run when she notices that Luffy of all people was holding the sea king by the nose laughing like a madman until the beast jumped in the water again and she could have swore ten years of life have been taken from her in less than a second and as she was about to jump on the water, Luffy simple swims to the shore with a smile on his face. Her jaw dropped, he had not even a single scratch, Luffy did you just wrestle the sea king? Maybe a dumb question but she needed to be sure this was not an hallucination. Hey Dayton what are you doing here? He asked while getting back on his clothes without drying himself first. Luffy, answer the question, for some reason a shadow covered her eyes while she stood rigid as the boy approached. What question? Taking a deep breath she repeats, did you just wrestle the sea king? The woman is really losing her patience at this point, with a vein popping on her head she knows that if she was weaker her heart would already have given out due to stress. We were just playing, not fighting. Turning around he talks a bit louder, isn't that right spot? She looks over his head and swears that the sea king was sweating cold before it took another dive, this time he didn't came back. Playing. The bandit felt as if her soul was about to leave her body, and his name is Spot. Well yeah we do this almost every day, he lives in a cave below where we are standing right now and since he is the biggest thing around here I need his help to train. Finishing buttoning his shirt, he puts his hat on his head still smiling like a loon looking as if he just didn't fought a monster but played with a dog. And you name it Spot. She is not going to live long if he treats this as normal, Luffy who under the heavens plays with a sea king and then names it Spot. Yep, not normal at all, she is gonna to get an ulcer if this keeps going. Well I named him before we started playing, we fought first and I won. Then after a few days he came back for a rematch but he wasn't any stronger so I beat him up again and when I noticed he lived around here I moved my training ground here permanently, looking around she could see lots of broken rocks and some tree logs that may be used as weights. Luffy are you telling me that you miss Ace so much that the only training you can do is with a godforsaken sea king? For a moment both are quiet while Dayton takes some deep breaths and tries to relax before she passes out of rage or worry with this moron, was that what you fought Garp about? Maybe even he had limits. Luffy looks at her confused, what are you talking about? He loved the idea, because of course he would, we fought because he didn't want to teach me more about hockey. That thing again that the boy talks about since he was little, before it was ambition, something to be respected in a certain measure, everyone thought he was talking about getting his wish of being the pirate king, but then Garp said that name to him and supposedly as a technique but she never saw he doing anything special. Sure he can break some rooks and knock down some trees but she never saw much use if not to get some wood or construction materials. Closing her eyes and trying to avoid a headache she tries to reason with the boy. Look I get that you are trying to get stronger but there are safer ways to do it. She starts to turn around, now let's go home, we can hunt something on the. There aren't. Huh. She paused looking back to see his eyes covering with his hat. He looked really serious at that point but there was also melancholy on his voice. I can use hockey now, 
he starts to walk closer to a mountain to the side. After I got it, I asked Gramps how to get better with it, how to grow stronger. He pauses looking up, either to the sky or the cliff above his head. She notices him getting in a punching position, turning his back with the left arm while getting the right one on the front, then he shifts his footing a bit and changes the position of his left so that it looked like he would do some kind of uppercut. She turns around fully and is paying attention but didn't see anything special. Then he punched. Rising Hawk, the impact was loud and she could only watch as part of the mountain up until the cliff was destroyed with only some small stones surviving to fall like rain. Now the side of the mountain looked like lightning had hit it, hockey gets stronger the more I push myself, without a challenge I can't grow and I already have beaten all animals in the forests and now only Spot can compete with me. Her jaw had dropped for a second and she couldn't help but think that he was not a brat anymore and maybe this island is too small for him, then why not leave already to be a pirate. She would miss him but if he already outgrow this place then it may be for the best, even if he is young, younger kids have made their way into this world. Ace has only a year of advantage, you could cut up, maybe even beat him this time, because that was not a normal punch, she don't get what that, hockey, is about but if it can make you do that then she wished she had it when she was younger, maybe then Garp wouldn't blackmail her, or would arrest her for good so better not think about it. Can't, he smiles at her with his dumb smile, I need to wait two years still, we all promised to become pirates at 17, right. That promise between three brothers, she had forgotten that was the reason why it took too long for Ace to leave. Now, he loved his brother and the rest of their little family but he always felt like a caged bear, depressed and missing the woods where he came from. Looking at Luffy right now she also see a caged beast, a caged tiger born on a zoo but, for whatever reason, knowing that he didn't belong there and while never had she gone to a zoo before, she knows instinctively that an animal like that either will break out or die if kept in a cage like this. He doesn't want to hurt his family, she realizes, he could have asked for a spar with someone here or even picked a fight at the towns but he decided on a sea king because, with that punch, he wouldn't have a challenge unless the opponent was way stronger or tried to kill him. He wants to grow more, he hungers for it, how can she help? It's not like she can get a bunch of bad people for him to fight. I may have an idea that can help. Luffy tilts his head while looking at her and while she is going to regret it she smiles for this is a way for Garp to get his wish. Luffy was going to beat some criminals anyway, just not as a marine. Comma. Look mom. Is the ocean, exclaimed a excited Luffy while standing at the side of the ship together with a couple of other passengers some amused, by the kid's attitude while the crew of the transport ship can't help smile for the mood was contagious and every sailor started to sing, a mate on the docks. You know we shouldn't be attracting attention, said the huge woman with a scarf on her head, sunglasses and a dress covering her pants and weapons, while Luffy needed a black jacket to cover the muscle on his arms for even if the straw hat made him look like a simple boy the moment people paid attention they would notice a body made to fight. She also needed to be careful to make sure no one recognizes since this ship was leaving the Goa Kingdom. Getting on it at the capital was already risky enough and there was a good chance that anyone could have seen her wanted poster and would try to catch her for the reward. But then, who would guess that a mountain bandit was on a civilian ship going on a trip away from the mountains that she ruled. Remember the plan brat don't attract attention, then we are going to wait for the night in a few days, steal a boat and go for one of the smaller islands in the area. Then what are you going to do on one of these islands? She asks to make sure he remembers the rest of the plan. Still smiling, happy to be on the sea that he answers, find the guy with the biggest reward, kick his butt, call the marines and have then arrest the guy and give us a ton of money to start my treasure shishishi, he really is too happy for a kid about to fight against someone that will try to kill him. Try, because if she notices any danger she is jumping in to help even if costs her life, also the fact she has a reward of 7,800,000 berry, a high number on the east blue helps keep her calm for there are not many pirates on this parts with a bigger bounties and most of them sticks to the seas or islands away from the main routes so they can avoid marine patrols. Not that this is always the case, she almost hoped that some hotshot tried to attack this boat so they could get this over with and go back home. The sea really is no place for a mountain bandit, then we get a ride back to Fusha with the marines and hope to god that they don't have a poster with my face hard, since she is small time and Garp kept quiet about her activities over the years, but the disguise is for a reason, also don't forget in a fight against these bandits or pirates that you will go against, there will be no fair play and if you are in danger. I know you will help, 
Don't worry I won't lose. Not if I'm going to be. She put her hands on his mouth but fortunately no one was finding strange a mother punishing her son, anticipating that he would say something dumb. You're a not a pirate. You're a innocent kid on you first trip and for the duration of this trip don't say that out loud. She whisper looking at him straight on his eyes because while a big woman punishing the unruly son doesn't attract attention the word pirate would always always do it and with that there will be a bigger chance of them, more realistically her, getting caught, remember we are just on a vacation trip nothing else, then she takes her hands from his mouth. Don't worry mom everything will be fine, he smiled, confident that all would work it out, she really should have taught him more about planning but even she is not that good at it. And what did I tell you about calling me mother? He should be showing respect. For sure mom, shishishishi, she would let him have this one. She likes being called mom. Dot dot dot. Arlong is having a good time this week. Everything is going perfectly. He heard that his little human came back from another of her expeditions. Soon she will have to get ready to make another map of this islands too for a new associate so he he access to the best routes possible. Today is tribute day where his fish men are going to collect the tribute for his protection, and yesterday he had such a great time dealing with the new marine captain of the district and his new friend. A gentleman named Nazumi, who knows a good deal when he sees it. Yes, everything is going great for Arlong the Soft 20 million dead or alive, the former Soft Tooth of the Sun Pirates and the Terror of the East Blue. The last one never fails to give Arlong a laugh for, even if his entrance on this sea had made waves, the marines barely remember him. Six years on this island and every time that a navy vessel shows up they are given a choice, sink or swim. So far most marines took his bribes and left with only two exceptions. The first, he took his whole crew to deal with them but thanks to his maps they barely needed to make an effort and on the second he stood on the beach and watched as Hatchin and Chu sank the thing by themselves. He was huge by human standards but average to a healthy and active fisherman, with a nose like saw, long black hair and hat, very muscular with really sharp teeth and a black coat, open with his sleeves rolled up to expose his tattoos, the symbols of his pride. On his arm, his jolly Roger, the emblem of the fishman pirates and on his chest a big son looking at it he remembers better times, sadder times and a hero long gone. Then he looks over to a newcomer into his magnificent park. She is a young girl on the cusp of adulthood with short orange hair, brown eyes and a developing chest wearing long shorts and a blue t-shirt with no sleeves showing his jolly roger on her shoulder and with a split staff on her leg. To humans she would already be considered beautiful and growing to become even more. To Arlong she is cute and the only other human that he can say he respects besides his new acquaintance. Look alive my friends, our sister returns again. Arlong talks to his closer comrades present at the moment a pink octopus fishman known as Hatchin and a karate user called Karubi. I wish you had arrived at a better time. Our men are busy today collecting tribute, so the party will have to be at a later time at night. That comment makes her pause for a split second but then she continues in the direction of the fishman on the throne. There is nothing to celebrate about, she starts saying with hard eyes and a half smile. She has a goal here and Arlong knows it, but both also understand she is not even close, the profits were not good and one guy kept hitting on me. Ditching those horny idiots was a blessing. It can't be that bad Nami, you are a beauty, said Hatchin of the Six Swords, eight million dead or alive. The pink octopus with a flower-like hair could be considered the most kind of then, but not weak or soft by any means, I still remember how small you were when you got here. It is a problem when the guy is three times my age. Well, even Arlong will concede that point and considering the anger showing on her face he will refrain from comment more on that. Hachi looked properly scolded and even Karubi, 9 million dead or alive, who doesn't like Nami very much, looked sympathetic to her problem. Anyway it doesn't matter much at this point, I came to report I arrived and now I'm going to stay with my sister, if that is alright with you. Come now don't be mad at Hachi, he didn't know about the pirate's age. Sit down, I will get some drinks and you will tell us the kind of pirates you meet on your trips this time, it is a good idea to keep an eye on the competition for this sea. Even if it is the weakest one, he needs to be ready to start expanding his territory. Even if his race was the superior one, it would be mad to go against a man with an armada of 50 like Don Kriegs. Now, there is no rush for that, his power base is solid right now and he can still milk the trade routes of this island and anyone that tries to escape on his approved commercial ships gets sent back to their deaths. Took a few heads before the message got clear, but the people of this place eventually learned. 
his recent success in finding a marine captain that was ready to permanently cover for his exploits and with Nami's maps means that he will conquer this sea. Then he will go beyond. But for now, wait here a bit guys I will get refreshments. Nami, what do you want? You're not on age to drink yet. I already have drunk booze Arlong. She replies with a stare. Better to learn how to not get drunk than to be caught off guard. Maybe not when she was younger and looked more childish, there was less risk, but now the concern is getting more real for her so he can't complain. Maybe one of the boys should go for protection next time? Because there will be a next time, she is trying to raise that money for years and she isn't stopping now, Karubi here could intimidate or deal with any weakling of the east, the Ray Fishman may not like Nami but he knows her value and his big figure and karate clothes are not for shown. He always liked to use dark clothes ever since they were kids and, even with his size and the fact he is a fishman, he could hide easily underwater and keep an eye on Nami with no problems. I don't need help. I can do it by myself just fine. Arlong wanted to protest more but it was fine. She was committed but it wouldn't last. Sooner or later she shall learn that her place was at his side helping to build his empire. There are still plenty of easy marks for me to steal from. I only fight when absolutely necessary. To each their own, Arlong can only shrug at her declaration. I can't help but worry. When our navigator goes out alone, risking her neck. He smiled trying to be reassuring, but once she stepped back he knew he looked threatening. Sharp teeth have that kind of effect even on fishman. Don't blame me for trying. She blames him for a lot. The death of her mother, Genzo's scars, the threats to her village and the danger to every human being on this island. Hell, even though she works for him, her sister has to pay that damned tribute and because the traders and merchants were always verified by the fishman her business is always the same and the money was always short. Najiko, her only family in the world, would have died more than once if Nami didn't add a bit every other month. Maybe that is how Arlong planned to keep her from paying the price for her village. Well if so then that is fine, she can get way more on every new trip. She wasn't lying when saying her profits were low this time, she only could steal from two pirate crews and they hadn't much in the first place but she will get there, to the 100 million belly to free her village. It has been six years since this hell started, six years since her mother death. She couldn't mourn her properly, not while this monster was here, she worked like mad every day, be it on her trips, tracking targets, only pirates, always just pirates, watching then and either robbing then out of the gate or mingling a bit before pulling a fast one right under their noses or here where she needs to make sure that the maps are properly within the parameters to guarantee a quick victory for the fishmen or to have a safe port for his trade partners. Nami is almost screamed remembering how Arlong perverted her dream. This time there was not a single name of worth. The Navid pirates only got a few ports and by the time I was leaving they were going right into a storm. Not that they knew that. She could see the patterns on the weather and their navigator didn't notice the change of the air currents. So she infiltrated their ship got the loot and left with them none the wiser. The other group had a bounty on their captain. Small one of one million berry, not worth the risk, and I pretended to need safe passage. The captain was the pervert by the way. Wanted something that I didn't want to give, so I kicked him on my way out after I got them on the direction of the 16th marine branch around here. The new captain on that branch will want to prove himself, is a guarantee he either will sink the ship or force a prison as fast as possible leaving the pirates with little chance of escape. Especially with the sabotaged rudder, courtesy of the girl telling the story. Arlong smiled hearing the tale while passing around the booze to the three of them, the expensive kind. He really didn't hesitate to burn the money of her people did he? Ha! Huh. Yes good maneuver, I'm certain the captain of the 16th will do right by you. He sounded confident, maybe he heard about the guy. Or just to sound reassuring because no one could touch him anyway. Nami, we have a new sponsor, stated Karubi before drinking a bit. Then he proceeded, he is going to need some maps of the region. You know the basics at this point but you should do it before leaving to stay with your sister. We know how much you want to go on another expedition, so you can leave immediately after, at this point it's no secret that he doesn't trust her, six years of this and he always looks at her with contempt. Now, now, Karubi no need to be snide. Let her do it at her own pace. Arlong knows she will do it, she has no choice. Yes, let her go and see her sister, she has been out for weeks now. So must they miss each other, Hatchin adds showing his worry, which pissed her off more than it should. It's fine, I will get some maps ready for the new sponsor as soon as possible, she feels tired but will make do. Drinking a bit she starts to plan. First make the maps, then go back to the Tangerine Grove again and spend time with Najiko. Her sister looked fine earlier when Nami dropped the loot, but the orange head girl wanted to talk with her for a bit. 
it's the highlight of her return to her home village. Since most people don't talk with her much, reasonable sense, to them, she is a traitor, talking with Najiko about her troubles is the only reprieve she has most of the time. Make maps, rest, go steal from some pirates, come back and repeat. That is her life, since she convinced Arlong to let her get on a boat to try and gather more money faster. She fears what will happen if she fails to come back. Would he grow angry enough to kill everyone? Be patient and wait. Forget and use what he already has for his plans. I will go to my room now, the maps will be ready by tomorrow. Placing the empty cup on a small desk, she turns to go to her room. Fine, we will call you later for the party, when the rest of our camarades return. Our long words have no meaning for her, they were no camarades. Make sure to rest somewhat, since you drink now we can have a competition. Want me to call them back earlier Arlong? Hatchin's words gave her hope that the people of the Konami Islands could have some more time to gather more money, or if she can have her sister share money, maybe they would accept it if they don't know it was from her. Arlong next words killed that hope, tribute day is tribute day, they have to pay either way so better to do it now, the smile on his lips was cruel, so she stopped looking at him and kept walking inside the building, already going on her head the fastest way to make the maps. We can't allow bad habits of losing our dates, so they will always know the day we collect. It is more fair like this after all. If that is fair, then she can't wait to see hell. At least there you deserve your punishment. Comma. Fun fact about mountain bandits, she starts to think, they don't have a clue how to navigate. Now to be fair, the plan started well and they stole a boat successfully without getting caught by surprise, considering how big a boat of a transport ship is like, people should have noticed it, there were islands close to where they jumped ship and they were inhabited, all that was needed was to get there. The problem is they did it at night and they had little vision and couldn't get to one of the closer islands to start searching for a bounty for Luffy to fight. Worst yet is that neither knew how to navigate and, by the time the sun was up, the ship was gone and there were no islands around. So for the next three days they used the oars to try to find a place to port, all the while fighting against the currents, and trying to save the supplies they had, a lunch Makino packed for Luffy and some stuff Dayton stole from the ship out of habit. They had enough for one more day by her accounts and she knew Luffy was eating less than his usual for her. We need to find land and fast, both of them were trying to force their eyes while looking to the horizon in different directions. Any sight of land and they will gun for it. Come on, come on, there has to be something. Ah, mom? Still on that brat. You don't need to pretend anymore, she keeps searching, there has to be some sign of land close, there has to be. Mom, you really should look over here, Luffy says again while something starts to rise from the ocean. It's kinda important, the shadow begins to cover the small boat. Brat, focus on finding land, and for the last time, she turns around, stop call, she looks up and sees a cow. Some kind of sea cow, way bigger than her and looking at then funny, tilting its head in a human-like fashion. Luffy's start to smile, food, and rushes to grab the horns of the beast. He holds on then, one hand on each and the sea cow starts to shake. Dayton can't help but think that this scene looks a little familiar. Ah, that is a sea king, she hits the palm of her hand with the other in a moment of realization. Luffy get back here this instant, apparently the boy couldn't hear her while mounting the cow and laughing like a madman. The cow fights to try and take him down, then it dives back on the sea, that idiot, she takes her disguise off and now stands on her normal pants and shirt, drawing her axe she is about to jump when from nowhere the sea cow rises from the water again, Luffy still holding on her horns, you lunatic brat, she will skin him alive for worrying her like that. The cow keeps fighting but Luffy must have done something because it refuses to sink again. Shaking its head again and again it starts to slow down. Why is she surprised that Luffy apparently can beat sea kings? The cow is bigger than Spot but the result is pretty much the same, it tires itself into submission because the kid's grip on her must hurt like a bitch. Did I acknowledge the name of that other sea king? Luffy must never know, speaking of the devil there he is sitting on the head of a sea king, she can feel the white starting to get on her hair at this point. Hey mom, I caught a fish and a cow, technically he is right and said cow looks extremely miserable at the moment, should we cook it? Okay time to put her foot down before the situation gets any more weirder. Luffy we can't cook anything on this boat, it's too small, the implications of cooking and eating a sea king gone completely away from her at this point, there is only way to keep going on this mess, roll with it. Huh, no breakfast then, 
his face was pitiful for how sad he looked but she can't muster any sympathy because he is sitting on a giant cow sea king, what are we going to do then? Finally, a priority, we need to find land, from preference one with people on it, then we can get in a ship and go home, she was right, she regrets that dumb idea, her place is on the mountains and Luffy needs someone to teach him navigation. But I was going to fight the bad guys, the boy whined, she raised him to be more thoughtful than that. We are lost on the middle of the ocean, she finally runs out of patience, time to say some facts, we need to find someone and get home, then I will get you a navigational teacher. WHO ever heard a pirate WHO doesn't know how to navigate. He's pouting now. Really. Good god this trip was a disaster. Say Milky, do you know a place with people? Does he think the cow will? The cow is nodding, great can you take us there? If you do we won't eat you, the cow nods even faster, it's official, sanity is a distant memory in her life. I, think we have some rope here, roll with it, she thinks while getting a rope that was used to tie the boat, the problem is that it turns out the rope is not big enough to tie it on the horns or the neck if it is also to be used on the boat. Just give to me mom, I will hold it on Milky while you ride on the boat, Remembering to just roll with it, she gives into the suggestion because he looks too much comfortable on the head of a sea king, tying the boat and throwing the rest to Luffy he goes a bit down to the back of the cow, let's go Milky, the sea cow let out a, moo, and then they were moving in a direction random direction. All the while Dayton can only ask herself if they were really going to a island or if the cow plans to hit then on some rocks and call it a day, that lasted until she noticed the coast of a island and, better yet, there was a village at sight, they were safe. Finally the day is starting to improve. But entering a village by seeking is not a good idea. Besides the attention, people may panic and someone may get hurt. Not that she cares but Luffy would so she said out loud. Luffy, we should land on a more deserted place. People from the East Blue are not used to sea kings appearing on their shores. She doesn't know if that was accurate but it is a safe bet since the beasts usually stay at a certain distance from the shore. If we can't, we should ditch the cow now and just row the boat for the last stretch, there now it's his decision, they can risk going with the beast or not, either way she just want to get to land, go home and never get on another ship for the rest of her life. Okay. Milky, stop right here, it stops slowly, either he is really good with animals or the cow is really smart, possibly jumps back on the boat, turns around and looks back at the sea king with a face of sadness. Milky, we have to go our separate ways now. So please go to a better place, a place far from here with plenty of food and friends for you to play with. He covers his eyes with his hat and turns around but, before he can position himself to start rowing, the cow hits him slight with its nose. Luffy turns around, and puts a hand on the nose, they were crying and he starts to pet the big nose that she can't help but notice it is as big as her. Then all of a sudden he stops, turns again and screams. Why are you still here? Go, this ocean is no place for you. Now the cow looks even sadder and starts to swim away slowly, turning a bit with its head before it got back to go away again when suddenly, Milky I will never forget you. Go and be free. He shouts while holding his arms to the sky. The cow turns around, lets out a loud, moo, and then accelerates towards the horizon, she can't help but think that the scene would look really good on a sunset, there was just a small little, tiny problem on all this. They meet this cow barely an hour ago. Taking a deep breath, she tries to just roll with it and row to the port and salvation, all that while Luffy sits down smiling, having said goodbye to an old friend knowing they will meet again. It was just a hour. How they got all chummy so fast after fighting for a few minutes. She is grateful for the timely appearance of the sea cow but if there is a thing she misses more than any other on this trip was her sanity, she is never getting that back. Finally, after a few minutes going at full strength, they reached the port of the village and she couldn't help but getting on her knees and kissing the land, then she just lays there for a little bit with Luffy tying the boat to a post gods help him if he doesn't do a proper knot, he is never leaving their home until he learns. The silence helped her to calm down from all the events that happened in the last few days, she just wanted to lay there, close her eyes for a bit and. Why is everything quiet? Getting up she looks around, the village was not in disrepair and she can hear sounds of people running inside the houses. Why were they hiding like this? Did they recognize her and ran? That is impossible, this is an island away from the Goa kingdom, she can't recognize the land or see any mountains around, there's absolutely no chance of her poster ending on this random patch of land, 
she never made big news or was a pirate attacking lots of places, she had her side of the mountains, stealing from trade caravans and travelers. She did many crimes but always in the same area and leaving with as little damage possible, it is the reason Garp had no problems ignoring her activities or pushing his brats on her. Luffy stops at her side, also looking around he asks, what now? He must have felt her worry, because she can see he is on guard. Good, his instincts are sharp. We need to find someone with a den den mushi, those snails are the best way of communication on all the seas and most, if not all islands, have at least one with a short distance burst to closer communities and navy contacts or even longer range to talk with other countries with seas of distance. The problem of the second kind is that is only found on the bigger cities or with the government, the other option is to pay for passage on a trading ship. But we have no money right now, the first passage out of Goa costed a good penny, if all had gone according to plan they would have at least one million to work with and that is if the marines had no problem offering a ride straight to their home, after all, depending on the trade routes of this island they can take months before finding a ship or a route of ships to get back. From one of the houses exits a man, and both of them can't help but stare at him. His body is covered in stitches from his face to his arms and legs, is that a pinwheel on his head, roll with it, just roll with it. Besides the strange ad on his hat and the scars, he is dressed as an officer in a darker red color and had a decent mustache, so he must be either part of a police force or the sheriff of the village, this is not the time to be careless, say old man, do you know where I can find someone strong to fight? Even the stranger looked confused on that one, you are not from around here, definitely an officer of the law, and a competent one at that, I suggest you leave as fast as you can. This place is not kind to strangers. Dayton raised an eyebrow, is this a threat? Because I don't take kindly to those, if needed she is getting her axe and dealing with this guy. Capturing him is the better idea, he probably knows where is this island Den Den Mushi, but that is also a risk. Time to go for a tactic that she doesn't use often. Diplomacy, all we need is access to a Den Den Mushi or a charter of the ships that pass by this island, we are a bit lost and I want to go home. The man nods, believing on the notion easily considering they came by a boat and looked like they passed days on the sea, which they did and that was unpleasant, unfortunately this is the worst island possible for you two to end in, he stated while looking around, especially today of all days, I can see you passed by a bad situation but if you stay you will die. Dayton knew threats and that wasn't one, it was a fact for him, just by being here they are in danger, what do you mean by that? Whatever is happening, is a routine for this village, certainly explains the emptiness of the place and this man's hard stare. Sir, Luffy starts, being polite for once, what are you afraid of? Now that the boy said it, she can see it, he is right, the man before them is afraid of something. It's not for me I fear, you two need to go now. He is getting agitated, listen to me, get on your boat and leave, no one here would want you sharing our misery. She doesn't know what is happening here but the man before her is not her enemy, the problem is, we have nowhere to go, we don't know how to navigate. If we leave we may die, it's better to be honest on this, even as a bandit lies are dangerous. Do you have any money at least? He's panicking, and when Luffy and Dayton shake their heads, he continues, then you need to run and hide, I can take you two for to a safe place but we need to go fast. What is going on here officer? She asks, starting to get worried. Luffy still looks oblivious but, looking at the scars of the man and the lack of people outside can only mean that someone is coming and they are dangerous. Especially to control that many people, this behavior is trained on them, by repetition and punishment. Luffy get on the boat, only a strong enough force can do things like this, not bandits say either a huge pirate crew or worse. The man nods, his job is done, he can't help them to get home but he can send them away from the danger here, I wish you luck on your trip. Do you have any food or something, I'm starving, said Luffy, going to the boat. He has a point with the few supplies they have, starvation is a real concern here. Unfortunately we don't have much time, you need to leave now, he is terrified, Dayton nods whatever is here she wants no business with it. A voice from nowhere starts to shout, time to pay humans, prepare the tribute or for the consequences, at that moment the man started to sweat and grew pale, the voice is probably the reason why he's terrified. Coming from a corner of the street, a group of strange men walked forward, many stopping in front of various houses and collecting money, the extortion ring. She wonders, if that is the problem she may be able to deal with them. Either is a bandit in parley or is a fighter, what is wrong with their skins? 
asks out loud without thought making the officer flinch. He answers quietly, they are fish men and you have to hide. Dayton is shocked and starts to panic. Fish men on the East Blue can only mean one thing or better one person, Arlong the Saw. He's here. The man nods and gets rigid when the fish men notice them. At that point Dayton knows, it's fight or die now. Fishman. Native of the Grand Line, the ultimate ocean, only totally conquered by one man and his crew, the Pirate King, and as a species they are superior to humans in the most frightening ways. In a world like this, with too much water and too little land, they can come and go as they please for they can breath on water. Their strength is legendary for they are at least ten times stronger compared to a human being for they need to be able to swim on the ocean by their own power since little. It's said that only mermaids are faster. Luffy get on the boat and paddle away from here as fast as you can. She said resolute. Mom. What are you talking about? He is confused but they have no time, he needs to escape. If she stays and buys him time, he can escape if they both do then they will pursue and kill them easily on the sea. Genzo what you have here, two new humans for our esteemed island, Chu. So his name is Genzo ha, huh? she will remember the guy that tried to help her in hell. Chu there is no need for anything, they are stranded and ended here by accident. Now, the man known as Genzo tried to reason with the taller fish man, he has light blue skin with blonde hair, that is hair right. Dressed in a blue vest and short pants but what catch her attention more are the lips, thick and not like a human at all, he also had a tattoo on his arm but she should focus on the conversation instead of the appearance of an enemy, dot not citizens of this island they don't need to pay the tax, you have to respect the man's efforts to avoid a fight. But she can see in this, Chu, eyes, this will get ugly and fast. By the rules all humans have to pay the tribute, if she has the money excellent, she can pay and leave with her kid if not usual punishment apply, she is afraid to ask what the punishment is. What punishment? Luffy on the other hand lacks tact as usual. The smile on those lips is weird but recognizable. Death, now she notices the other fish men getting close, some with tattoos and hairstyles but irrelevant, it's now or never. She draws her axe from her back and strikes Chu who blocks and holds it on his two hands but left himself open to a strong kick on the ribs. The other fish men look surprised but that is expected. Arlong have been on the East Blue for six years if she remembers the papers at the time, if he was hiding here against only civilians then they had not fought someone in a good while. She then spins her axe hitting three enemies surrounding her, Luffy acts fast and gets Genzo out of the way. Good, if she can beat then they can get supplies and run, get to a Den Den Mushi and call Garp to deal with this mess. Two fish man on the front charge at her after her swing, and she punches one and swings again for the other. The first blocks the strike but the second is not as skilled as Chu, and gets cut on the shoulder, pulling her axe back she tries to get hold of it while the first punches her on her belly. They are strong but she can take a few hits, when another comes from behind and punches on her back. Falling to the ground she rolls dodging a fourth one that tried to stomp her, she keeps rolling until getting space to get up, still on the docks she has no place to run and trying to hide on water is suicide. Mom, Luffy screams and after getting some distance with Genzo, he prepares to double back to help. Luffy they are not enemies for you to face. Run. She barely finished her sentence when they jump at her again, she fights trying to maintain the distance, using her axe to keep the fish man at bay. She gets two or three hits but they keep getting up, the wounds superficial for their species and finally one gets another good hit on her head, she tries to reach for her other weapon when, suddenly, something hits her right shoulder. The fish men stop pushing and get back a bit while, Chu, gets back on the fold, she managed to take only two down with the other two still standing alongside their leader. Nice try but a human can't beat us, Chu, and their numbers keep rising, the ones who were collecting the tribute before now stand behind their official. Be grateful for Chu of the Arlong Pirates is about to send you to hell, Chu, introduced himself, Chu, 5,500,000 dead or alive, and Dayton has no idea how he hit her from that distance, now there are at least 20 of the monsters and she can only hope Luffy had escaped. If you want to kill me then try but I will make sure to take some of you with me, she can't move her right arm properly and can only use her axe at this point but she will buy her boy time. She feels awful, afraid and regrets because it seems that she will not see him starting his own adventure. Sorry Luffy. Whispered her, ready to die. Some pirates started to draw swords and get closer, but she will fight to the end. She won't have to, from the corner of her eye Luffy comes running and smashes his fist against one fish man and the guy flies hitting and knocking out three more. 
How you dare human, screams one of the pirates while Luffy stands in front of her. Luffy, I told you to run. He started to crack his fingers and glared at the fishermen, his eyes covered by shadows. Sorry mom, can't obey that order, and he charges at them. Dot dot dot. He is mad at the moment, completely pissed, Dayton, the woman that raised him and his brothers, teach them stuff and cared for them on her own way, saved their life and she was hurt and he is absolutely pissed off at this point. After putting the pinwheel guy that tried to warn them, Genzo, he has to remember the name of someone who tried to help, into a safe distance, he came back only to see his family getting hurt. When she screamed for him to run he did for a second to get Genzo to safety but now he is back in the moment that she started bleeding he only saw red. His punch had no hockey, because he needs to mind his stamina and he is hungry, besides there is another that he wants to punch more than the others with it, the lip bastard. Said lip bastard doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut, you just signed your own death warrant, he looks angry but Luffy knows his rage is bigger. Get back, I will deal with him, chew. Come all at once, Luffy demands. What? I said, come all at once, he repeats, after I beat all of them I will break your lips. Huh. Is he an idiot? Said one of the other pirates. Lips don't break dumbass, also you can't beat all of us, we are the Arlen. I don't care, he says calmly until, you hurt my mom now I will hurt you. Luffy charges and pulling his hands back he starts to punch while he advances attacking and running at all fish men. Catching leaves, screams Luffy while punching at a fast speed. One, two, four, six, he keeps punching as fast as he can hitting every opponent he can reach, those that notice the onslaught retreat, but he is relentless not stopping until the lip bastard is the last one standing, every single pirate knocked on the ground most unconscious, some awake but moaning in pain and every single one of the with broken bones and bleeding. Chu takes a step back, he looks afraid, good, wait a minute, we can negotiate. No we can't, in less than a second Luffy is on front of him and with back of his left hand hits Chu chest making him bend forward, when Luffy screams, gorilla smash, his hand turning black before reaching his face and when he does the sound of the impact is high but not higher than the sound of Chu flying through a house breaking in and out of it and ending on his back, knocked out, his face damaged to the point that you could say he did broke his lips and the rest of it too. Luffy has no time to think, he runs to Dayton, mom, come on I will help you, don't worry we will find a doctor, he keeps checking on her trying to help her sit down and stop the bleeding. Idiot kid, I should ground you. Didn't I told you to run? She smiles, and he smiles back. They have to find a doctor for her but she will be fine. Comma. Genzo can't believe on what he is saying, for six years the Arlong pirates have been invincible and dominated the Konami Islands without competition, ever since they killed Belmere, who was a marine officer of high rank was killed and he, who almost shared her fate, was cut so much his body is full of scars, no one challenged the fishermen. Arlong ruled the island and its citizens were forced to pay a ridiculous tribute to survive. But the worst thing Arlong did was capture and enslave one of their own, Nami who made a deal with the pirate captain, 100 million belly for the freedom of her village, a ridiculous price and her people can't help because every month he collects 100,000 for the adults and 50,000 for the children and if you don't pay the tribute death was certain. The people of the island live by scraps and fear but Nami has it worse. But now the situation has changed, most of the Arlong pirates are on the ground, vulnerable and beaten. The person who overcame them, a young man no older than Nami, sits helping his mother who also managed to hold her own for a time but it was this, Luffy, that demolished the fish men. It's hard to believe such a strong person is so young. Now what should he do? Once Arlong hears about this, he is going to be livid, there will be hell to pay. There were two choices here, turn them to Arlong or help them escape, they need supplies and wait, if they help, Arlong is going to kill the people from the village, or he wouldn't, they didn't fought, they were paying the tribute as usual and they just show up if they help the pirates after the two left they can't be hold accountable but then. From nowhere Nako, a man with grey hair, eyebrows and a goatee with a mustache combo, passes by to the side of the pair. Not a surprise for, as the symbols on his clothes show he is a doctor by trade, getting on his knees with his kid he takes off his sunglasses and starts to bandage the shoulder of the woman, Luffy smiles as he looks to be reassuring his mother that all will be fine even if the woman don't looks like she needs reassuring. Genzo, called Firine, a middle-aged woman of blonde hair, dressed in farmer clothes, her family was behind her and they were the first to exit their house after the fight, 
fair because it was their house that Chu flew by and their vegetables he was on. What do we do? Arlong is not going to like this. He is thinking about it. Across the street, coming from all the village because of the noise, lots of people started to show up. The few children, none younger than six for no parent wanted to bring to the world a child where there is such risk of death, the many adults and just a couple of teens, many died trying to challenge the pirates or trying to escape, all stare in disbelief and he is there with them not knowing what to do. We should give them to Arlong, he almost punched Tasio, a fishman of the village, dressed in a t-shirt and pants, with brown hair and tanned by the sun. If we don't give up then we are the ones who are going to die. The murmurs don't take long to begin and even Genzo is confused. Can this kid beat Arlong? Fish men are strong and he defeated 20 alone. Arlong lost almost all his crew except Hachin, Karubi, and Nami. The problems are the captain himself and the sea king which patrols the area. Arlong is strong enough to beat the others for while their rewards are lower than the 10 million belly mark Arlong is double that threshold. Making a decision Genzo steps forward to talk with the family of two. While I appreciate you beating these pirates, you better get going. Their captain is much stronger. Better to have them leave, blame the mess on the two and hope that the pirates get back up fast enough to inform Arlong but not enough to catch up to the mother and son. We can give supplies and I have a map that can take you to the next island but if you stay you will die. He knows he is repeating himself but he doesn't want anyone to die and these two got here in an accident maybe their ship sunk. Better if they don't get any more involved in this problem. The mother nodded and looked like she was going to say something, hey can we eat first? But the young man interrupted, her speaking first and looking around him Genzo saw no one object. And nodded with some people offering to get some food. There are no restaurants in Kokoyashi, not since Arlong killed the last owners of the trade. Because when everyone was scrapping for money, eating out stopped being a priority extremely fast. The only reason why he, technically someone who can't work on anything other than guard the Law. No other criminals besides Arlong but he can't fight him, is alive is because every month he could sign to get a check from the government, brought to the island by more bribed people, and has a decent revenue every month, Arlong would have it confiscated, every month, on the exact value of the tribute. The rest of his money he gives to the ones that sometimes can't pay, not much use to anything else these days. Since everyone shared the suffering and also shared the resources, they had. Soon potatoes, fish, rice and other types of food were brought to them. There was some conversation but no hesitation on feeding the guy who brought the pirates down a peg. Luffy then starts to eat and looks to focus especially on the meat while his mother, he should ask her name, also picks some vegetables and fruits leaving most of the meat to her son. Soon fast steps are heard and almost everyone looks to the side and sees a blue-haired woman approaching. She just turned 18 and just like her sister he loves her like a daughter. She grows more beautiful every day and he dearly wished he could give her and her sister a better life than the one they have on this hell. The only thing he is never certain of are her tattoos, she made them in sympathy for her sister, marked by Arlong, then in a demonstration of love Nojiko had Nako make tattoos above her boson and on her right shoulder. Beyond all that she is the only one in direct contact with Nami. Nojiko what are you doing here? I noticed that the collectors were late and since Nami came home today May. Be, they won't, she looks to the side and see the damage done, the pirates beaten and with wide eyes she looks back at Genzo who can't help but smile a bit at her face, Genzo, what in God's name happened here? Telling her a short version, a mother and son pair drifted on the island and the son beaten most of the pirates on the island for harming his mother and throwing a punch so strong that broke two walls and a fish man's lips. Smiling at the thought, and now Nojiko can't help but just stare at the kid who is already on his sixth plate must have been days since he ate, his mother already full by the looks of it and resting while Nako check her for wounds and some of the village asked her how she raised her son. For some reason she looks embarrassed at the question and keeps looking around almost as if planning to escape something. After a while, and Luffy's tenth serving, Nojiko approaches, bends on her knees with her head on the floor. Please save my sister. Everyone looks shocked at her actions e Luffy stops eating completely. Nojiko what are you doing? Do you want to kill us all? Someone demanded, he wasn't sure who as he kept his eyes on the blue head. Yes, Arlong will kill us all. We don't need their help we can hold a little bit longer. More and more comments leave the crowd but the woman didn't raise her head. Luffy is just looking at her too while everyone is just commenting how much a bad idea that is. Finally Genzo sits by Nojiko's side and asks, did something happen with Nami? 
The second he asks the question everyone stops talking. Nojiko finally raises her head and looks Luffy on the eyes, she then begins talking, she tells about Belmere and her adoption with her sister, she tells about the happy days with their mother and Nami's mischievous nature, she tells about Arlong's arrival and her mother's death, she tells him about the deal with Arlong and Nami's determination, by the end she in tears and she wasn't alone, many are also but they had no choice, Arlong is too powerful. Every time she comes back she is more tired, more angry and more reckless. For the last few years since she started stealing from pirates she started to get in more dangerous situations and is desperate enough to risk herself on them. How did he let the situation get that bad? The question repeats itself constantly on his mind while Luffy just sits there in silence. There are 58 million belly in my house, everyone stands in silence at the value. It's all yours, please save my sister. She lowers her head again. A. Hey, Nojiko we don't need to risk it, right? Nami is almost there, someone said in the crowd again, not caring who said it he started to get angry. I mean it will take her just a little while too. How long? This time Genzo is talking and all will listen. I'm picking my sword and going to fight now. Many stare at him in shock. I don't know how long Nami is going to take to get all the money but she is risking herself for us. We are cowards, for six years we did the necessary only to survive when we should have fought instead we let a child fight. Luffy's mother then says, it doesn't matter to us we are leaving, she gets up and everyone stare at the huge woman, taller than any of them by a good margin, I won't let Luffy fight against a 20 million belly pirate, much less a fish man and former comrade of a warlord. Yes, that is why we shouldn't fight him, Firine said this time, she was holding her young daughter while her husband was by her older son's side. If they fought little Ari could become an orphan with no family to take care of her. Nami will do it, and if she can't she can escape. Remembering Sam the drunk of the village, he raised his two daughters by himself and they left just before Arlong showed up. Bunch of cowards, that is what you are. The huge woman said, I may be a bandit but I never gave a task to my men or my brats that they couldn't accomplish and when they need me I'm there for them. Either her words or the fact that she revealed herself as a bandit silenced the villagers then she turns around. We ate let's get some supplies and leave and starts walking to a random house. You are going to steal from us. Demanded Tasio, staring at the woman in anger. Why shouldn't I? You let the fish men do it, or are you going to stop me? She looks at Tasio and every single one of them on the eyes, most refuse to meet her stare and those that do meet it, look down in shame. You are the ones risking a child's life throwing her at the sharks and the wolves without doing anything. Then what should we do? Asked one of the teenagers, he can't remember this one name. Arlong controls the trade, he is stronger and wants that those pirates you beat wake up. Didn't you say that those were most of his forces? Asked the bandit. I may not be good at planning but even I can see that with that many men out of the picture you won't have another shot after this one. Also if you think he will let you all go when he has the money you are all idiots, she finishes trying to cross her arms but unable to do to her injury. What do you mean he won't let us go? A promise made with money is sacred for that bastard, Genzo says almost shouting in fear that it was all for nothing. The same way you hold hope on that girl to free you he holds her on a chain by keeping you here, and yes he may value his world but if she can't deliver for any reason he won't give up this village. She stops for a bit trying to find the right words but shrugs and goes straight to the point, when you have such useful blackmail on someone you don't give it up, ever, I know because I'm in one. She continues, I'm not the brat biological mother but I was blackmailed to take care of him and the guy used the same material twice. Why would a pirate don't just find and steal her treasure or just leave for a day, come back, conquer it again and this time keep her just for her maps since she can actually do the impossible. Silence, no one can say a thing, Genzo fell on his knees. All was in vain every little thing, all Nami's sacrifices, useless and they let her suffer all this time, never showing support never making a different plan other than trusting her and if she falls go for it, die and free her like this. He starts to cry and he is not the only one, shame and rage are bubbling now and they won't wait for Nami now, it's time to do or die. He got up to clean his face and looked at the woman, what is your name? Curly Dayton, Mountain Bandit. If you want to know my bounty don't bother it won't be enough. Don't need to know, you are right we are cowards, his stare at his home at a distance, but I won't be any more. Turning around he shouts, we made a mistake and gave a monster one of our own it's time to get her back. WHO is with me. As one they all shout, 
resolute, many may die but this is their only opening and they will take it. Either they will be free or they would be dead. The smaller children and the no combatants will need to be taken to the other village but there is no coming back. From the side Nako comments, we have few weapons, most is just fishing equipment, if needed better get knives and anything that can cut the bastards, oaths to heal can go to hell in this kind of situations, also we should tie or kill the ones down there. Everyone looks at the pirates and Dayton talks, I can do it if you can't, consider it paying for the supplies, she didn't need to bother, there is enough rage that no one would hesitate to kill. I hate to ask but are you sure you can't help? Ask Genzo, bandits are not they can fight and that is what they need right now. I have a responsibility to take care of my own, they now want to fight but that is their fight not hers, not while Luffy is on her watch, all I can do is wish you all good luck, she extends her hand. Genzo didn't hesitate to shake it, it was a pleasure to meet you, Dayton. Nodding her head she says, likewise, these people will fight now, she can only hope they can win with numbers and free themselves from their tyrant. She smiles and turns to call, Luffy let's go. Where is that moron? Everyone starts to look around too, confused with what was happening. Nojiko is also missing, now Genzo is the one screaming and looking around everywhere. She was not getting weapons or talking with anyone, suddenly he turned to Dayton and his one both came to a scary realization. Those idiots, is the start of a beautiful friendship. Comma dot. Nojiko felt weird being carried on the arm of a guy she just met, frankly speaking he didn't say a word before scooping her up and starting to run in a random direction. After getting some distance from the village he looks at her and asks, so where is the Arlong guy? After looking around a bit she determined where they were in the direction of the Arlong Park, and off they went again as the guy runs faster than she is used to. By the way what is your name again? Didn't he heard Genzo call her back there? It's Nojiko and you can let me go now. Nah, it will be faster like this, technically correct but he could, at least, hold her with both arms to make it more comfortable, she feels like a sack of tangerines never going to hold them like this again. Is that the place? He stopped in front of Arlong's gates. Yes this is it. Are you sure what you are about to do? Nothing against him helping but Arlong is dangerous and the guy doesn't look like he thinks very much. Why wouldn't I be? He lifts his right feet and prepares to kick the door to call for attention, horse stomp, or to kick open the door leaving half of it bent while the other falls on the ground. Huff, need to train more. What are you? She asked, being put on her feet. I'm Luffy, a kid on vacation, for some reason that doesn't sound right. H-E-Y. He screams at the tree fish men that were looking at them surprised. By the entrance, which one of you is Arlong? Arlong got up, and walked to stand on the front of his subordinates, I'm Arlong. Who are you? What do you want? I'm Luffy, replies with a smile on his face, and I'm here to kick your ass. Making a map is not easy by any measure. Besides needing to be a bit of an artist, the drawing needs to be as precise and understandable as possible to make it, it is also necessary to have a considerable knowledge about the terrain in question, if it is close to the sea then it's also needed to add the shift of currents and of course there is also map, you need to calculate every position on the map being made and correlate with the place it was based from. There is a logical difference between the map in real life and math is used to explain the differences. Nami knows every equation, every detail of her home geography to the point that she could make a map with her eyes closed, no rulers and it still would be better than most maps. That was all born from the process of repetition, Arlong made her work from the first day on at every opportunity, for many maps with different angles of the island for the benefit of his fish men and copies of the best routes for and from the economy. She is exhausted but wants to get it done fast just a couple of maps then she can go home for a few days, she keeps moving her pen with that purpose, exhausted. Just a few more hours and she could go and rest for a few days. Suddenly there was a big noise outside but she ignored it, either Momu came back hungry or Arlong got some bad news, she just needed to finish her work and leave. After a few minutes there was another noise, louder this time, she kept focusing on her task, almost finished. Finally an explosion or something similar made her make a mistake and move her pen in a straight line, right on the middle of the map, she gets frustrated and gets up from her table to go outside and scream to her tormentors a bit for this would be a rare chance to let some of her anger out and they could only accept it. Going down the stairs she opens the door screaming, can you all shut up for 10 minutes so I can finish the map, then she blinks. Looking around her she sees Hatcham and Karubi at the side with mouths open and eyes wide shocked 
turning to the side she sees her sister at the gate with the villagers all armed. The vision makes her nervous, leading her to panic and she looks for Arlong to try to apologize and justify their actions in some way, then she notices. The craters on the park, half of the gate damaged and the other half on the ground while in the middle of all destruction there are two figures standing. To one side a kid he looks younger than her but she is not sure blood runs all over his head and his right arm where the jacket and vest he is wearing are damaged with signs of teeth on his shoulder, a straw hat on his back. On the other side Arlong, he is bruised and bleeding as well just not as much, his hat had fallen somewhere, he lost it, she realizes, and he kept his hand on his torso, breathing slowly for there was a lull on the battlefield at the moment, both fighters getting ready for another round. What hell is going on? Confusion and worry mix together as she screams and every other person in the park turns to look at her with mixed reactions. Comma dot. Arlong was amused, a kid showing up to kill him is not new, Nami herself tried that a lot when younger, and many of the island inhabitants tried over the years just to die either by him or one of his fish men. But never before has one been so bold, and strong enough, to kick his gate. He couldn't help but laugh, the day is getting better and better for him. And why, you want to, as you called, oh yes, kick my ass. Holding his laugh he asked curiously. With a small smile Luffy asks, you are the strongest guy here right? Arlong nods, that is why, such a simple reasoning made the fish man laugh even more. WHO do you think you are human? Demanded Karubi, preparing to attack until Arlong put a hand on his shoulder. Fine, fine, Captain what? I'm in a real good mood today, everything is great and if a brat wants to die by my hands I see no problem with it, then he glances to Nojiko. I don't know why you bother to bring him here, but if it was to give me some fun I can give your sister a extended break. Nojiko could only stand in silence staring at him, then she looked at Luffy, you can beat him right. Arlong found it cute, she thought a kid could bet him. Hachi and Karubi got to the side wall while Arlong stands in all way form the building entrance, waiting for the kid. Sure, no problem, then Luffy steps forward, can we fight here or you want to leave? Nah, it's fine. This won't take long. Okay. Suddenly Luffy moved like a flash and punched Arlong straight on the stomach. Rock smash. The fish man is pushed a few feet and looks surprised by the hit. The follow-up also came fast. Catching leaves. Several punches were thrown on his chest and head in just a couple of seconds until he punches back, hitting his opponent on the face and sending him flying back. Luffy recovers quickly and falls on his feet. At this point Arlong is still curious about this brat insolence, the attacks were fast and not bad but if that was all, the fish man would make short work of the kid with no troubles. You are stronger than the others, Luffy said, getting back in a fighting position. Others. There was a lip bastard and a bunch of weird guys in a village out there, Luffy is ready but Arlong eyes are covered by his hat waiting to listen to the end of this story, they hurt my mom so I punched them. After finishing speaking Luffy charged. Arlong now is seeing red, this brat dared to harm his comrades. Absurd, he will die just for implying such thing, shark on darts, he launches himself to his opponent and Luffy barely has time to dodge and after Arlong passed by him he stops himself and picks the straw hat by a arm. I will kill you, he bites on Luffy right shoulder and, while the attack was successful and Luffy bleeds, his teeth break on the attempt, surprising the fish man. Rising swallow, screams Luffy, kicking the pirate on the chin, Arlong faces looking up and he took real damage but he refuses to let his opponent go. He recognizes this pain in a way but focuses on his own counter, lifting Luffy by his arm he smashes the kid on the ground, then he does it again in a final time until Luffy kicks him again this time on the chest. The second kick is weak but just a distraction for the kid. Soon Arlong notices the left arm of his opponents and drops the right before the other hits him. Luffy ends punching the ground, the impact forcing the two to take some distance. While at a distance Arlong teeth grow back and he pulls the new set out, Luffy charges at him while he does the process once more. Then, when Luffy is close, Arlong prepares to use his teeth on hand as a weapon but Luffy ignores it and punched Arlong right on the chest going straight through the fish man defense. The pain is really familiar but Arlong can't place why the strikes of this kid were hurting now when they didn't before. Luffy doesn't give time for recovery and follows up with another sequence of fast punches, stronger than the last, catching fireflies, this time he can't counter as easily so he jumps to the water. Calming himself, feeling safe in his element, 
Arlong starts to wonder how the boy is doing this, it makes no sense why he is having that much difficulty against such a small human, who just jumped on water and started to swim at him, he is a idiot or just wanted to commit suicide. It doesn't matter if he wants to die fighting a fish man on water, where they are at their strongest, Arlong will oblige with gusto. He aimed his nose and used his shark on darts to finish the kid off once for all when, out of nowhere he was kicked again, he can't understand how, he was faster in the water than on land, and there was no way a kid could hit him like this or move like that. Being kicked out of the water he falls on the ground, angrier than before, how? You are just a human, how you moved like that on water? Demanded Arlong. Training. Getting back to land, Luffy places his hat back on his head from the ground as he looks at Arlong, then he puts it on his back and charges again. Arlong. Growing more frustrated by the second throws a punch which is deflected and countered, Gorilla Smash. This one was stronger than the last and enough for Arlong to hit a wall at the back of the park, opposed to the gate. Getting up he looks over his opponent's head and sees the villagers coming to the park, all of them armed with spears, swords and knives of many kinds with a huge woman armed with an axe leading the march with Genzo. When they notice Arlong bleeding they are surprised but none more than Nami who exited the park screaming. Kama. What the hell is going on? All are looking at her now and for the first time in a long time she feels small from so many stares. No one answered her for a while until the kid with the hat started talking. I'm fighting the big guy. Huh, and who are you? Is he for real? Why is he fighting Arlong? Why were the villagers there? And why is no one else saying anything? Nami get here this instant, screams Genzo, he looks fine and with his usual pinwheel. He is stepping to the side of Nojiko and soon all the villagers are calling her as well. What is going on here? Where are the others? Asked Hatcham, the octopus looking at all this confused and disturbed. This is a rebellion, they dare to turn against us, stated Kurubi getting ready for a fight. Wait. Kurubi let me talk to them, begged Nami, she fought all this time, all her effort to stop the slaughter of her people she won't give up now, guys what are you doing here? She tries to smile going to them, ignoring the fighters at the center of the park, for some reason neither is moving, just watching her, or you insane. Get to your homes where is safe and. We know, stated Genzo. Suddenly Nami stops, looking right in his eyes, we know, he repeats a bit louder and firmer than before. She looks at Nojiko who just nods, then why are you here? Desperately she screams, don't you realize you are doing all this time and you are going to throw it all out. She sounded more frustrated and irritated by the minute, I just need some time why are you all here you all should hate me. We never did, shout Genzo silencing her, we shouldn't had let you fight alone. From the very first day Nojiko told us about your deal with Arlong, he paused to breath, if Belmere was alive she would call us all idiots, letting a child do the fighting while the big men run for their mothers, or something like that, he smiled a bit there. Some of the crowd looked down ashamed of their actions, but no more, all that are here decided, either we free you and kick these pirates of our island or we die, nobody retreated, they all were there for this, all ready for there would be no other chance. Nami was stunned, terror threatening to leave her eyes but she kept resolute, you can't win, the certainty in her voice was absolute, just go, Arlong won't attack while I'm here, just please I, don't I want anyone else to die. Girl started the big woman, it's not about what you want but what you need, she looked at the fish man, and you don't need to be a slave to that lot. Kurubi smiled and stepped forward, while his captain fought the kid he would have to deal with the villagers, and what a weak human like you can do. He prepared to fight assuming the starting position of the fish man karate, a martial art that uses all the power of a fish man. She looks unimpressed at the fish man, without saying a word she pulls a gun and shoots him. The ray fish man looks down on his stomach where he had been hit then looks to the woman, you can be as strong as you want. Until you learn how to survive bullets you can fall the same way as any man, and then she threw the gun to the side while Kurubi fell to his knees trying to stop the blood. The weapon, the kind found with a captain from a ship, had just a bullet and she must not had extra ammo but with only two enemies left it was no great loss, Arlong tried to move to strike but Luffy intercepted punching the captain down and girl, you are so afraid of this guys you didn't see any other solution to your problem, if you are such a great thief you should have tried to get guns and fought back. It's funny in a way, you all were so focused in protecting each other that didn't think about fighting for one another. Luffy kick this fish ass so we can go home. Sure thing mom shishishi, 
Arlong gets back up and charges again but Luffy just dodge all his strikes, the fish man can't catch him. While this is all happening Hatcham can't comprehend what is happening, he wants to move inside the park and get his swords but hesitates. Nami knows that among all pirates Hatcham was the most kind to her and the villagers, so much so that Arlong pretty much ordered him to not go get tribute for he would either give the people time or just ignore a house or two. Now, with the only comrade standing being Arlong himself Hachi is hesitating but she knows if he fights the villagers many will die winning or not. Hatchin, he looks at her confused, leave, the island doesn't want the fish man anymore. If you fight you will kill and you don't like that. Leave. If her people are going to fight she will with them but she needs to be smart about it, if the guy fighting Arlong wins, there is no guarantee he can fight Hatchim too soon after and she has seen his six sword style. Hachi kill these peasants now. Arlong finally punches Luffy on the gut but he can't capitalize because the kid punches him back forcing another split. Both are bleeding more and looking more exhausted than she ever saw him. All the while the octopus looks at the villagers and his captain confused, he really doesn't like killing, he is complacent of murders but he can't do it himself easily. Noticing this the big woman said, if you want to fight, come at it, but these people won't be slaves anymore. Slaves. For some reason that word got to him the woman pounced on it immediately, she may look able to fight but there was an attempt of avoiding it. What else do you call people who live to cater your every need? She raised an eyebrow and continued, you take their money, force them to sell to your allies and have one of them working to the bone for the very right to live. If they are not slaves what are they? For some reason the pink pirate looked sick, he kept looking to his captain, to the villagers and to the big woman, she prepared her axe but didn't attack. Nami noticed her bandages, she was hurt and this was a risk the bigger problem was. Hatchem stopped screwing around and deal with the thrash, even fighting Arlong had enough presence of mind to not disconsider the situation, he needed help. Our brothers must be dead at the hands of those, worms killed them, another punch shut him up and he almost fell on the ground but he straightened himself and attacked again, but his opponent never let himself be caught in any of the attacks. Hatchem looked ready to fight now, the thought of his comrades made him resolute, Nami was almost panicking but Nako the doctor intervened, we, unlike you, don't kill easily, he had the attention of the octopus now, we tied them with as much rope we could get in, while most have broken bones, the only killers here are you. Once again the fish man stopped, everyone was ready to fight many afraid, Nami most of them all. Finally Hatchem did the unthinkable. He looked at Arlong, I'm sorry, and gun for the water, jumped and disappeared. All signed in relief except the last member of the Arlong pirates, Arlong himself. Kama. Luffy was starting to wonder what to eat after the fight, it was starting to get boring for him. Now it's not that the other guy was weak, he was just slow, really slow. Well that is not fair, Luffy is just faster. Arlong is stronger but after many, 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 many of Gramp's beatings there is a lesson that Luffy learned, if you can dodge you are cool, if you can't you are screwed. And right now that is his greatest advantage, he used too much energy on his attacks early, he needs to get stronger, this fight helped but now with the other guy getting even slower there is nothing more for him to gain from this. Luffy kick this fish ass so we can go home, well time to finish this. Sure thing mom shishishi, he is happy she didn't tell him to stop calling her mom yet, he likes it. Arlong tries to get to the others, a punch pushes him to the ground. Luffy has to give him that, the fish man doesn't quit, he can respect it. He is trying to force his comrade to kill and that is bad, shame really this would be more fun if he wasn't a bad guy. Oh look the pink one left, well that was too bad Luffy wanted to fight him too, he wonders how fun it would be to have six arms. A.R.H., looks like Arlong got more angry with his friend leaving. It's sad, no one deserves to be abandoned but he hurt those people. He gets up, eyes red and starts to move faster, not as fast like he was on water but he is still slow. Now that Luffy has his rhythm the result didn't change, the boy just dodges, why I can't hit you? Demanded the pirate. Because you are slow, dodge again, problem is Luffy is tired and all his attacks are much weaker than before, Hockey is really tiring to use, he needs to learn how to pace himself better. The pirate suddenly stops and jumps back, slow. I will show you slow. You are dead, then he jumps again and starts spinning, shark on tooth, this time he is going to try and rip Luffy apart, the problem for him is. You are still too slow, dropping on his knees below right when Arlong is passing Luffy uses the last of his stamina in a powerful strike, rising Hank, 
hitting Arlong right on the stomach and launching him on the air, the fish man flies higher until he is above his own building. Finally gravity starts to take its due and the pirate captain falls on the ground on his back completely passed out. For a moment nobody said anything, you idiot, mom starts hitting him on the head, he falls on the ground exhausted, what part of we were leaving you didn't understand, she picks him by his jacket and vest and scream on his face, do you know how worried I was? She she she, hey mom. What? He really was feeling tired after all this but he just wanted to say. I won against the strong guy here and it helped a lot. He is smiling again, too pleased with himself, it was a really fun vacation trip. That damn brat. She can't be mad at him, a mother can't, great now even she thinks that she is his mother. Well that is fine, that means she can do this, idiot son of mine. He smiled more at that, you are grounded, still smiling, no meat for a week, still smiling. Okay, huff what an idiot son. Suddenly the cheers started. All from the villagers were smiling or crying celebrating the victory, the orange-haired girl. Nami fell on her knees and was stunned with her sister at her side and the officer looking very pleased with himself. Nako moved to help Luffy and faster than she could blink he helped her to put him on the ground to take a look at his shoulder the boy still smiling like a loon. She can feel the year catching up to her and swears to never make a trip like this but the job is not done even if this villagers can't see it. Listen here you idiots, everyone stopped to give her attention. There is still a lot to be done don't think for a moment that this is over and if you relax we can get in a worse situation. Nobody moved. The relief replaced with fear. Good focus is really important now, where is the Den Den Mushi of this island? Arlong had it in his office, said Nami, the advantages and utilities of someone with inside information and preemptive knowledge, now that she finished worrying work can be done. Get it for me, we need to call the marines, with any luck, not one marine specific because if he gets wind of what she did either he will laugh a lot or arrest her for good. She likes her odds but there is no reason to risk it. Unless any of you wants to kill them we need the navy, besides that get more ropes or find some chains for the big guy. She pointed at Arlong and the villagers began to move, many entered the building of the park, while others got some rope or chains to tie the remaining fish man, speaking of. Your bitch, Karubi is still alive but it was obvious he can't do anything right now, his voice barely a whisper. Looks like blood loss affects both humans and fish man equally, who knew right. The doctor moved to help him but the pirate tried to keep him at bay. I refuse to accept, any help from your kind. Nako tried to convince him, if I don't close the wound, you will die, he explained, you also will need a blood transfer. Even all this, these people were willing to assist their tyrants, she wished to know why but there was no point. Why are you helping me? Or the guy himself would ask, either way is good she supposes. We decided to be better than you, also the idea of you spending the rest of your lives in hell appeals many of us more than a quick death would, that was a lie, even after all this Dayton can tell they just don't want blood on their hands, the only ones with guts on this village were the two girls of, Belmere. It made the bandit wish she had meet the ex-marine, either for a fight or a drink it would be interesting either way. The fishman decided to let the doctor look at the wound, a pensive look on his face while some villagers stayed around him with weapons ready. Maybe these people have a spine and are just too nice for their own good. We found it, someone screamed and they brought a big, the size of a person's head. Snail connected with a board with numbers, it looked well fed and had a small police hat on its head. It used to be mine on the station, said Genzo, Arlong just took the one already here and used for his purposes, I'm surprised they left the hat. He prepared to call the marines but before he could, I would suggest you don't do that, Karubi started. We had a lot of sponsors on the navy and the market around this place, if you call one of ours you will end the same way. He smiled a bit at the information. All just stayed quiet and looked at each other, Najiko broke the silence, Nami, is he telling the truth? He is, there was no argument there she was sure. I made a ton of maps to a lot of their sponsors, I would not be surprised, she looks at Karubi, why tell us this? Because I don't trust you humans, if you surrender and behave all this can be forgotten, he offers, and if you not, it will not be much longer until one of ours comes here and claims our resources as their own. Damned if you do, damned if you don't it seems. Luffy punches the karate user on the head, knocking him out. I refuse that, he turns and looks at Dayton, and keeps looking at her. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Back and forward they keep going at it, Luffy insistent and Dayton reluctant. The villagers are confused and can only guess how long this will take. Mom call him already. 
Luffy he is never, and I mean never, going to let me live this down. She was sounding really desperate but she can't help it. She doesn't want to admit she left her mountains and got lost to that man. Mom, he looks at her and waits. She will not budge on this. He kept looking. Luffy I'm a bandit. You will not make me feel guilty. But he was, just by staring and not saying anything to her. She turns around in only silence. She holds her head high for a bit and looks back. Luffy is still there just staring at her. After a few minutes of absolute silence, dot she breaks. You are a scary kid when you want to be. She then picks the collar. I will make this clear now I will regret this. She 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 she. Yep she knows she will. Pora pura puru pura pura puru. Garp was eating and no one called him on mid-lunch. No one except Sengoku. His old friend and arguably his only equal on the marines. Dared to interrupt him at lunch. Of course it didn't help that he ate whenever he wanted and used his subordinates to do most of the office work but this time he is on the official time lunch break instituted for the navy, in general. Most if not all personnel ate at this time unless they were the bunch who had to work on it for whatever reason, there must always be someone at a post at any time. So after the fourth attempt of calling him he takes it just to have some peace at lunch, what? I'm having my meal here, the voice on the other side was dated much to the vice admiral's surprise. What happened woman? Arlong, really? Well how did you two ended there? Bawahahaha. Really? Got lost even? That is hilarious ha 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 ha. He said that huh? Yes I can see the problem, and to think Arlong was that smart. Krieg at least the navy avoids going after for the sheer numbers of his fleet. Alright. Alright let me think on something. I will let you know I will come up with a brilliant idea. Well, you did raise him right if he can beat a grand line pirate at 15, oh spot. Ye Luffy introduced me. Nice fella. Wish I had the idea of training with a sea king. Oh don't be such a, okay. Geez I get that he was reckless but give me a break, look. I will do what I can to make sure the right people are punished for this. Actually I have a idea. Just keep Luffy on the island for a few days at least at most a week. Don't worry, it's a good plan. He hangs up. Well there are three ways of going at it. First go there himself and he had no time for that. Second call Sengoku for a favor. Yea no three it is then which means calling a competent officer and setting the situation up in such a way that the old bastards can't cover up. This will ruffle so many feathers and piss off so many people. He shouldn't go for this. Calling Sengoku is the sensible option. The safe option. Dot who was he kidding? It was the third option from the beginning and all the way. Someone remembers Kuzan's number. He screams to all his subordinates, also bring me more pasta, with that settled he called the other number he planned for. If this doesn't get Luffy on the marines. I will try other stuff, some people weren't made to quit. After Dayton made the call, the villagers helped clean the park of everything of value. Nami is still on a lull with all that happened. Apparently the woman and her son, adopted and there is a funny joke there somewhere but for the life of her she is just tired right now. Ended on the island by complete accident. Riding a giant cow, she had no courage to tell the woman any more about it. Fought the fishman and, because Arlong was strong, Luffy decided to fight him. Insanity doesn't cover their last few hours. After all of value was taken from the park, torches were used to burn it. Genzo, after seeing her room and especially her pen which she tried to hide, offered her the first torch, after it everything was destroyed, stone by stone. Right now Nami can't figure out what to do with herself. Many villagers are apologizing to her, it was not needed, offering her stuff, she didn't want, and in general trying to compensate for, leaving her to fight by herself. She insisted that was her choice. They looked worse when she said that. After a while, Nako offered to rid her of Arlong's mark she accepted. She planned on a pinwheel and a tangerine but before that there is something that she must do. She waited for the night when most would be asleep. Then she moved to the center of the village. A few tents were up. A bit of protection against the elements. There were also three guards around ready to shout if anything happened and inside these tents were the fishman, the Arlong pirates tied to ropes and chains, beaten and bruised. Nako gave some medical assistance, the bare minimum in reality, no one wanted them able to go on a rampage, most were awake, glaring at her but she wasn't bothered or even cared about them. She kept moving to the center where, tied to a tree with chains, was Arlong. The captain had seen better days. If there was a pirate no one wanted on their feet, it was Arlong and to make sure of that he received zero treatment of any kind so there he was, tied up still covered on his own blood and with obvious difficult to breath. Not that he was bleeding, for the wounds had already healed, but he also is not getting any water or food. The fear of him made anyone unwilling to risk any kind of recovery. 
Look who finally came, the traitor. Arlong speaks slowly, he can't muster the strength to look at her properly, head still down. Shouldn't have expected more of you humans. Are you going to kill me now? Everyone else on the place was quiet. Even the guards were tense but silent. If Nami wants to, she can just stab him and no one would stop her. She doesn't move neither speak, just stands there and stares at Arlong. Minutes pass and no one says a thing for a good time. Losing his patience, the fishman raises his head with great difficulty. His eyes are full of rage but he can't do a thing. What do you want? Say something. Are you here to brag? Finish the job? Nothing. She just stands there, answer me damned. He stops to breath and the silence continues. She began to talk then, I hate you. I hate you with every fiber of my being. You made me a slave, extorted my home, hurt my friend but more importantly you killed my mother. She is breathing hard and glares at him fiercely, pulling a knife from behind her. She could have lied, she chose to die. The knife was pressed on his neck in an instant, her eyes full of murder. Shut up. You know I'm right. You know nothing, you killed her for nothing. She pressed the knife further, Arlong was bleeding a bit. Do it, come on. Don't you want your revenge? When he said that she stopped, looked at him and started laughing like a maniac. It was not a beautiful laugh, it was one bitter and full of resentment. You want to die don't you? It's not why you are here. Do it already, and she doesn't. She takes her knife out of his necks and starts to walk away. No, the marines can have you. We are done and I will never see you again. You are nothing without me. Arlong tried to get up, to do anything. But he couldn't he was beaten and the damage was taking its toll. I was the one who brought out your real potential. I was the one who gave you the tools for you to hone your craft. I made you who you are. Don't walk away from me. Nami stops, she looks back and just walks out. There was no need to say anything to him. Made her. No, Belmere raised her as best as she could and her values are still with her. Najiko supported her and kept her steady on the many times she felt like failing. Genzo, before and during pretending with the other villagers that they hated her, always looked worried. It was for her now that she thinks of it, in hindsight. She started to run to the cliff of her mother's grave not noticing someone had seen her, and while running she was not sure what to do when she got there, what she would say. Should she apologize for taking that long? Should she just cry and say how much she missed her? Finally she reached the grave, it was a simple one, just a cross of wood on the ground. She wondered if Najiko should be here with her right now. She didn't know what to do, she had been here before but this is the first time it didn't feel like the weight of the world was not on her shoulders, she was free. There were many things to say but where to even begin. Steps come from behind her, are you alright? It was the kid who beat Arlong, Luffy, he had some bandages on him but mostly he looked fine, someone fixed his jacket and the straw hat was on his head. How did that thing survive the fight? He also had some bone and meat on a hand, a huge piece half eaten. I'm fine, she says, shouldn't you be sleeping? If Nami could, she would like to be alone but she also would like to not insult the person who beat Arlong. Na slept a lot after the fight, he looks at her for a bit, you sure you are fine? Yes. Could you please leave me alone? She really doesn't want to deal with him right now. I really want to be alone right now. Okay. Then he sits down a little behind her and she looks at him incredulously. Didn't you hear what I just said? She complains but the kid stays in place. Yes. Then why are you here? She is getting stressed at that point. Because it looks like that is not what you want, he starts to eat his meat and she can just stare. I said, he interrupts, you said you want to be alone, but you don't look like you want to be, he looks at her right in the eyes, if you did, then why come here? To speak with my mother, he nods. Yep, so how can you be alone when you're speaking with her? Is this kid mad? She is dead. I know. How? She is growing frustrated with this idiot. Your sister told me, Nami shut it up there, she told me while asking me to kick Arlong's ass, clarified the straw hat, calm. Why are you here? Oh. I saw you running with a knife, that is dangerous and you shouldn't do that, his eyes move to the knife and Nami also looks at it, she was going to use it on Arlong but after seeing him beaten she found it was best to let him to his own misery. For a minute she just stared at it, then turned around and looked at the grave, Luffy still on the same spot as before. For a while that was it, he was silent with just the sound of him eating from time to time, besides that it was just silence. Why did you do it? She finally asks, did what? Fought Arlong. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to. That is no reason, she had no strength to scream on that. Why did you want to fight him then? To get stronger. This guy must be doing this on purpose to provoke her. Fine. Then why do you need to be stronger? To become pirate king, is he a pirate? 
Ah. I'm not supposed to tell anyone that on this trip, he is insane that is for sure. Can you forget about it? You are a pirate? She panicked and prepared the knife. No, she stops on her tracks at the answer. Not yet, what the, can only be a pirate in two years. Why? I promised to my brothers, he looked nostalgically to the horizon at that point. We would become pirates when we had our 17th birthday. He looked at her still smiling, Ace left a year ago, now I'm waiting for my turn. Why do you want to be a pirate? This is the guy who saved her village. He should be a hero, not a pirate. All they do is steal, pillage and hurt people. They are the worst kind of person. And Pirate King? Why? She stopped to breathe, after screaming so much she felt exhausted. Luffy just looks at her tilting his head and nods a bit and starts talking. There are good people and bad people, good pirates and bad pirates, good marines and bad marines. He said absolute certainty of what he was talking about. When I was little, I met a cool awesome pirate called Shanks and my grandfather always wanted me to be a marine, always, so when I saw Shanks just having fun and being nice I liked it and wanted to be like him. To be free to do what I want. Then his expression turns cold, years later I met this bad pirate called something Jam. I don't remember his name, he herded my family and started a fire that killed a lot of people, he looks at her with a strong look, he did it because the nobles of the town told him to. Then he just finished eating his meat, got up picked the knife from her hand and started to walk away. There are good people and bad people. He turns around with a dumb grin. Don't be sad, you too are a good person. And then he left. After the stress of the day Nami finally started to cry she sat there and just let it all out. She cried for her mother, for her wounds and all she passed. She moved closer to the grave and told her how much she missed her, that Arlong was gone and that she would be fine. On the next day, Najiko found her sister on their mother's grave. She had slept there and looked at peace. For a time Najiko debated waking her up or not and decided to do it on the basis that it was not a good idea to sleep on the ground. After waking her sister both of them moved into the house for a good breakfast and then to go to the village, until the pirates were taken from there it was all hands on deck to keep an eye and guarantee that if anything happened the fish man wouldn't be able to harm anyone. While eating both sisters talked about a lot of stuff and Najiko couldn't help but to feel relief. Nami was free now and she is acting like it. The day before she looked sad or in a trance after all the commotion. She thought it was because Arlong is still on the island. There was nothing to be done about that for now Dayton said that until the end of the week at the latest all would be solved. She didn't understand why but trusted the woman. She had no reason to lie, especially being treated like a hero by all in the village. Can't wait to have you here helping with the tangerines after saying that Najiko noticed Nami's look. A smile but at the same time not. You're leaving again aren't you? I'm thinking about it. She replies looking sheepish, haven't decided yet, it was predictable really, after all this time living for others. If it is about your dream I say go for it, in the end the sisters just want to see each other happy. You sure? Once I'm gone there is little reason for me to come back. She looks to the side. Maybe to just visit once in a while, and that is what matters. Distance is irrelevant, they will always be family. Any plans? Well no, but I want to start on the East Blue and work from there. For money, I could always steal. What about the treasure that you have here? It's yours, that doesn't sound right. Mine? I stole it for the village and while I talked to mom yesterday, I decided to part with it. I want a new start so you can keep this one, I will get a bigger one later. Are you sure? Yes that one has, memories, the goal was for the village, you can have it. Nami decided on that, she will be fine. A few days later Nami was still admiring the new tattoo. Nako did a great job. The pinwheel embarrassed Genzo and she loved it for that. The day was a good one and she was still deciding when to go on her next voyage. She told no one other than her sister and she isn't planning to, she plans to come back. Especially since before going to all other seas she plans to roam for quite a bit of East Blue. Not all. Not enough treasure. Sooner or later she will have to go to others including the Grand Line and while some of the other seas have some maps. The Grand Line has so few that most of the stuff there is only heard in legend. Suddenly one of the fishermen comes running into the village. A navy ship is coming. He said. There is another ship at the side with no identification, at that moment the people started to move and get ready. If one of Arlong's allies then they would fight if not, well preparations were still necessary. The unknown ship may be commercial or enemies but the navy was the real danger. Luffy you keep an eye on the fishmen. Wait to see if the marine is trustworth. If not, punch them we settle all the rest later. Dayton warned her son while she hid in one of the houses, not out of cowardice but on the risk that if was a good marine. They would have to arrest her but she had her axe and was ready for a fight. 
A few minutes later both ships stopped at the port. The smaller one first. It was a transport ship and there were a lot of people exiting it. The marine ship started to let out their troops and there was a massive man with gray hair and a weapon strapped on his back giving instructions. All the villagers were nervous but Luffy looked curious if nothing else. The marines started to secure the area while the other group picked notebooks and were going around asking questions. Nami goes close to Luffy. Any idea of what is going on here? He shakes his head. The huge man looked to the others and let out a gruff. All the while he moved closer to Genzo. Are you the responsible for this settlement? Genzo could only nod at the man who then asked, Where are the fishmen and the person who beat them? And what you will do with this information, credit where is due Genzo could really handle pressure. In accordance with the act of bounty collecting and regards of the established laws, to give the bounty I need both the pirate in question and the one who, by acting on good faith, beaten him. After a small pause to let the words sink in he proceeded, after some signatures the person will receive the bounty and the gratitude of the world government. Luffy come here, called Genzo. Apparently there was no reason for hiding, this marine sounded legit. The captain looked at Luffy, who's a 15-year-old kid and it showed with his enthusiasm, ran at him and stopped at an arm's length. You are the one who got Arlon. Not disbelieving just curious the marine asked. Yep, name's Luffy nice to meet you. Again he just smiled like the guy wasn't a man of importance but an acquaintance on the street. The big guy just nodded and didn't see to mind his attitude. My name is Smoker and I'm the captain stationed at Logue Town. I was sent here for an investigation of certain accusations and incidents regarding this islands. He then looked to one of his people, a woman with short hair, glasses and typical marine uniform. She comes closer and gives him some papers while whispering on his ear. After a few seconds, we confirm some of HQ's suspicion and I promise that those bribed and any who helped Arlong will be punished accordingly. Now if you would be so kind as to escort my men to the pirates, we will give the rewards and go our own way. No one could believe it was finally happening. Nami watched as the pirates were properly cuffed and escorted to the ships. From the corner of her eye she noticed flashes and the people which came with the marines taking notes and had cameras with them. Nami realized that they were reporters and she really was happy to never been caught stealing before and that Dayton was hiding. On the other hand now the bandit can't leave with the marines in absolutely no way. A picture and she will be wanted for more than just the Goa kingdom. The captain, smoker, steps forward with three briefcases he gives them to Luffy and patiently waits as the guy looked confused. Here is your reward. The world government officially wants to thank you for your help in apprehending such dangerous entities. Luffy smiles and puts the money. How much is on those briefcases? Since one of the officials, Hatchem of the Six Swords, was not found the reward his part is taken out leaving you with a total of 34,500,000 belly. Nami's brain needed to restart after hearing that. Maybe she should have gone the bounty hunter route. She wasn't listening for a bit but managed to come back at the end of a speech that was obviously rehearsed. Therefore, the government thanks you, your name please? Monkey D. Luffy, more flashes and the captain nodded again. Thanks you Monkey D. Luffy for the capture of such a criminal. Sign here please, he signed slowly, obviously not being used to it. Once signed, Smoker checked and extended his hand and Luffy didn't hesitate to shake it. More flashes happen and the captain turns to leave with his troops. Sir. Sir can we have an interview? What happened here on this village exactly? Your family name is the same as the hero of the marines, are you relatives? The questions go one after another. Luffy looks confused but he just nods and after a while starts answering. Sure I can do a inter whatever, I'm here on vacation and who is this hero guy? After someone says the name Monkey D Garp the kid answered, oh, he is my gramps, the shock on the faces of everyone around him didn't phase Luffy at all, say where you all came from. Ha, huh, we are journalists, sir, the power of the name of a legend is huge. Every reporter there is treating him like royalty. I asked where you came from, not what you are. For the next 10 minutes they gave various answers and once satisfied the straw hat asked more, how is the food from there? And continued after they answered, cool and are the people there strong, and continued, it's the place nice, and so on. Suddenly Nami started to laugh and even her sister looked at her confused but she couldn't help it. Nami. Why are you laughing, it was an energetic laugh, the first in a really long time. A sincere form of expressing joy. Soon all were smiling even if they didn't understand why. You can't tell? She stopped a bit holding her joy just enough to explain. Look at the reporters. Most did still confuse. They are not interviewing him anymore. He is asking the questions. Professional reporters, who can make celebrities and kings squirm on their questions are being completely destroyed by a 15-year-old kid. After that comment, 
many smiled and noticed that all the reporters were doing from there was just giving in to the curiosity of a kid. That lasted for hours and soon they leapt to their branches of the newspaper to guarantee that the story of the Konami Islands was told to all. She can't wait to read that edition. On the next day, it was time to go. Luffy and his mom were about to leave. They would leave really early so the people of the village didn't bother them. Something about a bandit not needing a hero's exit. Unfortunately, they couldn't go with the Marines and with the possibility that the trade routes would bring too many people to see where Arlong tried to make his empire, the older woman wanted to go fast. Problem is, they had no idea how to get back to Goa. The people of the village gave them a dinghy, with a sail this time, and some maps, but they still didn't know how to navigate. Fortunately, someone gave them a solution Take me with you, said Nami with a smile that said she was getting what she wanted and nobody could stop her. She walked to the port and had a backpack and a suitcase with plenty of stuff and clothes. Sure, said Luffy before his mom could even get a word in. Wait, that is it. Aren't you going to ask why I want to go? I could be going to steal you money as far as you are concerned. He didn't care for the money that much, besides for food, and paying Makino for all of it over the years, he can't see the value of it. No, the mountain bandit just stayed silent, used to Luffy's way of doing things at this point. Why? You want to? You said you wanted to be Pirate King, right? He nodded, well, I want to make a map of the world. You cover my back and I will navigate for you. He had no problems with that deal, but there was just a small problem. I'm only going to be a pirate in two years. Why are you leaving now? To Luffy, that is a fair question. It doesn't matter that he, kinda, needed this navigator right now. He can't be a pirate yet for a promise is a promise. It's fine, we won't go for the Grand Line in a couple of years yet and we need to get ready. Can't get a crew yet, not a pirate. Look, you don't need to be a pirate to get ready to be a pirate, right? Now she has his attention. I don't? No, we start getting a crew together and explore the East Blue. She must really have thought about this. You take care of the fights and I organize it as your navigator and first mate. I will do the logistical job and you take charge on emergencies. Logistical? You are not good at planning, are you? No, he isn't. The woman won't hesitate. This was a chance for her to have someone keep an eye on Luffy for her. There you go. I plan you execute. That was fine with Luffy and if he can have adventures before being a pirate then it was great but... Then what are we? Can't be a pirate for two years. Now even the girl stopped, she hadn't thought about it. After a few seconds she snapped her fingers. We are explorers. 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 Seeing him confused she explained. You said you wanted to be a pirate to be free, right? He nodded, if we don't break any laws that is what we are. Sure we can't have a Jolly Roger either and we have to obey the marines if they demand anything but we won't be pirates and we can recruit people for when we become pirates. Luffy looked almost convinced. The girl was smart and explained in a way he could understand. So we are pirates but not pirates, he can live with that. Luffy, by God just accept the girl's deal so she can be the one to deal with your insanity. The woman then entered the dingy, and you. Why do you want to come with him? Please tell me it wasn't love at first sight or something. What? No, I mean no offense ma'am but no the reason is simple. He wants to be a pirate and I kinda have a history of piracy. If the marines get wind of it I will be arrested so I can't be a cartographer the normal way. Luffy just nods even if he doesn't get all that is happening. Besides the normal way to have too many restrictions, he wants to explore. I want to make maps and the fact that he did save my village is just a bonus. She explained, but at this point the two women are in the conversation by themselves because Luffy already accepted that Nami is going. Fine girl, get on the boat, finally they were ready to leave. To the next adventure, Luffy was really excited for the next time. Count me out of it, his mother wasn't. But none of them knew that events would start to happen that would shape Luffy's future adventures in a more, grandiose fashion. Sengoku marched getting ready for a fight. The man known as, the Buddha, was ready to face his greatest enemy. A fierce opponent that has been trading blows with him for years. Then stopping to retreat and recover to the next fight. They would surely have four, as destiny has it. Neither can win and the fleet admiral had no choice but to accept that. Dressed in his long coat, his chest full of medals, his hat covering his afro-like black hair with a bird on top of it steps forward and opens the door with a mighty shout, G-A-R-P, for his enemy is also his friend and he really hates the man for the stress he causes. Hey Sengoku, you are here early. The Buffon looked way calmer than he should sitting behind a desk like the professional marine he was. The problem is, as any who knew Garp can tell, that is not usual at all. What did you do? What did I do? What did you do? Sengoku you need to be more specific, 
he didn't, the newspaper on the desk said it all and it was the reason for the wrath of his superior officer. You exposed to the news the Arlong problem. We had no condition of dealing with that and the bad press is not going to help. Because the addition of the day exposed the disgrace that happened on the east, the suffering of a village and the bribes that many, including marines, took which helped the pirate and almost doomed a whole island. Now Sengoku had no problem with someone dealing with that, he had no problems in helping people, it was the reason why he joined the navy, but he has a problem when corrupt officers are doing anything, in a normal situation, there is a procedure to deal with all that. And the man in front of him skipped all of that and called the press. Now, I can explain, it must be good or else he is taking a punch on the face. Remember my grandson? Of course he did, it was him who found all that and solved the problem and since there was a chance he could get hurt if any marine that was not a really good one was the one in the scene I took precautions. You called Aokiji and had him contact Smoker, that man is as honest as you can get, tell me the truth Garp, he grabbed the man and demanded an honest answer. Garp looked frustrated and replied, I want my grandson to be a marine, he started and made the fleet admiral let him go, you know who his father is, he is the only one of the few who do. That man, the most wanted man in the world Monkey D. Dragon, known only as, the Revolutionary Dragon, his full name hidden from the public for the safety of the reputation of the Navy, since the man before him is the father of the Revolutionary. If Luffy doesn't get on the Navy I can't protect him, not forever, so this is my attempt to show him a hero's life, if he likes it he may join. Sengoku sympathizes with his friend but as his superior he needs to point out, if you don't realize it. Let me tell you what you did besides trying to convince your grandson. You put our reputation tied to his actions. Anything that he does now will always be with the government in direct approval. Especially the marines we can't ever chase him if he goes on his father footsteps. Ah, didn't think about that, the marines thanked the kid for his contributions, ah, uh, thank you, which was photographed and is now headlines for all the world to see because Arlong was a big fish, don't worry he won't become a revolutionary. And if he does, Sengoku really wanted to kill Garp on time like this. He won't, he doesn't even know who his father is. Garp sounded too certain of something, but at this point Sengoku needs to run damage control. Pray he does not, even a pirate will be more tolerated, Garp flinched at that but the fleet admiral was done. Make sure he joins our organization, if not I will have your hide. Sengoku then walks out slamming the door making the papers fall. On the cover is a picture of a kid shaking a marine's captain and it is being spread all over the globe. Ace is thrown on the ground after another attempt at beating the legendary, whitebeard, yoy ace you should really quit don't cha think. Spoke a blonde haired man named Marco, he and his comrades are eating in the hall when Ace becomes intimate with one of the walls. Shut up I will beat that old man one day, getting up and putting his hat Ace prepares to face his opponent again when he glances at the newspaper in the hands of Teach, a member of the crew. Immediately Ace snatches the paper. Hey do you want to fight? But Ace isn't listening, reading and growing slightly miffed. That idiot. On an island on the middle of nowhere stands a tower. A man with marks on his face sees the paper and can't help but smile. He closes it and goes back to his work. In this world there is just one font of information that all can count on. The newspaper, which has branches on all oceans and gives the news in a way that the population can always receive only what is relevant to them. On that day an event happened that all branches had to share for it was too big of an event for it to be ignored. The corruption of marines and merchants, the plans of a mad fishman to take over one of the seas, the suffering of innocence to make the story an even bigger event. Finally, the birth of a legend, someone who standed against all that and, while young, represented the future for both his lineage and for the world. One day he will be known by many names for now he is only, Straw Hat Luffy, Arlong's Bane. The End of the Part 1 what if Luffy never ate the devil fruit?